let's start again. Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games and the best audio ever. Yeah, take, take two. Take two, friends. Yeah, yeah, it's live, so unfortunately, you know, you just have to deal with it. Um, we have got an amazing show today. I'll make the same joke, because Erlen's here. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't hit as hard second time around. No, but, uh, but we, we've got amazing interviews lined up. It's going to be kind of special time as yeah. well. It's very cool to kind of like bring in people and make all this stuff happen. And we're going to have a lively discussion. We've got David Page from Atari. We're going to be into interviewing somebody from Atari about the Atari VCS and all about getting your homebrew on there. Maybe. Um, like our other two interviewers, interviewees that we're going to be talking with after, Bob, uh, talking with Bob DiCrescenzo, and Dion was going to be on the show as well, but unfortunately he couldn't make it, he is sick, but I have a write-up from him about his experiences, about getting his two games... Yeah, so unfortunately, on the show, you'll Amoeba have to Jump. listen to us read, but... Yeah, uh, yeah you have it'll to hear our okay. voice, but just in your head, picture Dion... And his European accent talking. His beautiful voice. Yep. Uh, his games, uh, Amoeba Jump and Tower of Rubble. And Bob DiCrescenzo's game Failsafe for the Atari 7800. Lip reading must be mandatory in grade school class in New Zealand. Oh, Andrew Davy can lip read. Oh, wow. Oh, there we go. He it's can, a he can help you out whenever we mess up. Subscribing, teleprompter, and speaking of subscribers, I want to thank all the Twitch subscribers. And why aren't they in my uh, notes here? They're uh, on the side, though. They are good. on the side beside uh, Erlen there. I mean, why aren't they there? Oh, weird. Very, very weird. Oh, because I brought up the wrong one. Uh, I want to thank Al Nefer, Arkham A, Charms Card Coder, Atari uh, 1974, Atari Age, Beef Supreme, Beer, Polka, Buffalo, Pinball, Cafe Man 2D, Charles Donnie Mao, Charles Willen, Chitlala, Colonel Lama, Dianoid, Dan of Drexel, Doc Moo, Cows, Gamma Dev, Glenn, Main, Great Defender, Ground Trooper, Roger Rapper, Johnny WC, Carol G, Ken Jennings, Beta, Croco 2600, Gavelter, Lambda Express, Lauren DTZ, Mark Yannis, Mark Base Inc., Metal Atari, Mick Muse, Mike Soul, Mike Latel, Miss Command, MK Smith, Mother 3, Mr. Zarnwood, Mr. Fix, Mighty Constant, Neo Mean, Nostalgia, Co Hog, Arsis, Emily Render, Ghost Penders, BG, Ricardo Pimps, Rod Castler, Sledgehammer, Smitty B, Spice, Rares, Rares, Tiki Dan K, Teat Fos, Trekum D Vector, Vexor X, and VVG Double Down. I'm getting faster at that. Oh, yeah. It's pretty good. I mean, 10,000 hours. Right? <laughs> it's 10,000 hours. You do, you know, you do hundreds of shows. He drills and... this every night. That's to make right. Sure that every it's... night before I go to bed, I read this list. Um, <laughs> if you want to support the show, just uh, click subscribe with Amazon Prime. It's free. Just click subscribe on Twitch and you get your name on there and uh, help support the uh, cat's habit of uh, eating treats on the show. It's for the cats. Yeah, it's it's exclusively for for the the cats. cats. They're the star of the show. Um, And uh, just before we get into it, I just have one piece of news that's completely related to this. Um, Muddy Vision um, got some of his games on the Atari VCS. It was recently revealed by Atari uh, with a screenshot of Daredevil um, that uh, Muddy, Muddy Funster, uh, Lewis Hill, Muddy Vision, a bunch of names. Um, he let me know that he's getting three of his games, exclusive scoop, three of his games, Daredevil, Tire Tracks, and his brand new game. That's not even out yet. And congratulations EXO. to him. EXO is going to be on there, 7800. So there'll be uh, his first titles on the Atari VCS. So that is very exciting. Uh, he's an amazing, um, amazing developer. So uh, that's really, really awesome. Okay, um, let's jump into it. Yeah, let's it. jump in. We... Um, I um, recently got the Atari VCS, uh, mostly because there's now homebrew from the community on there. And that's what we do. And yeah, we got to support the community and talk about the things that are happening in the community. And since the community is getting their games on the Atari VCS, I had to get one. And luckily, we're able to talk to Atari today about, well, David, not not the entity known as Atari, but David from Atari. (laughs) Talk about the whole procedure of getting your game on the Atari VCS what's involved in that. And uh, we're also gonna delve into some questions from the community. Uh, some are very interesting, some are very spicy, but we'll get into that. And uh, David is prepared uh, uh, to uh, answer your questions. 
Let's see. Yep, that's all good there. Um, so let's welcome David Page um, from Atari, uh, from Atari VCS's Marketing and Development Department. Um, so give him a virtual round of applause. Thank you for coming on, David. Hello. It's a pleasure. Oh, hello, nice, hello. To, nice, to, nice to talk to you guys. We've been, we've been pantomiming uh, to each other for, uh, for the last like 15 minutes or so. Uh, That's right. You know, right. It's just like interpretive <laughs> hand dance. signals and <laughs> yeses, no, maybe, yeah. that kind of stuff. I do, I do feel like a special correspondent on a, on a news program. It's like, listen, I want to talk to you about <laughs> those tariffs, you know, and so. <laughs> Especially with that background. <laughs> no. You know, they always put this, the city yeah. background, yeah. the fake city. And I've been to one of those studios and they generally just have a TV in the background yeah. where they can just change whatever they want in the background. Right. People yeah. think they've got the, they're in this spacious office with right. this beautiful window that's facing downtown whatever. Right. But, no, well, I have, like I have uh, the beautiful city of Pittsburgh uh, because I am visiting Pittsburgh uh, since I drove up on Wednesday because my son is uh, competing in the national speed cubing competition. Uh, so we're here in wow. Pittsburgh, uh, and so I didn't think it through when you said you want to do an interview with me, and I said, okay, and I'm like, wait a second, I'm in Pittsburgh. So here we are, coming to you live from Pittsburgh. <laughs> so how, how good is he uh, at speed cubing? Is he, like, really up there in the competition, or he's there he's, for fun? Gary? Yeah, he's, I mean, he's... He's pretty good. He's not. I mean, he's not. He's not going to be shooting for you know title number one. Uh, you know the champion Park, uh, who has like you know world record of three seconds. But my son's doing pretty well. He's yeah. been doing it for just a just a touch over a year now, and like the three okay. by three cube. I think his his record, his personal record, is uh, eight seconds or nine seconds. And, wow. Okay. Uh, Incredible. He's been That's averaging good. around like thirteen ish seconds, something like that. So. He's going to do pretty well, but this is his first national championship, so he's excited and, you know. Wow. Eight seconds after your year. Oh, my God. Yeah, also, That's really good. the experience of competing and feeling things under pressure is so good for yeah. young people as well. Yeah. Just to have, yeah. like, a, like, a thing to build towards and a goal. It doesn't really even matter what that is. Just having that yeah. right. thing to do right. is incredible. Yeah. And he's cool under thing. pressure, so I'm very proud of him. He's not... He, he didn't get that from me, unfortunately. Uh, so, <laughs> which, like, uh -oh. which say that. <laughs> We'll see how this goes then. <laughs> uh, so uh, maybe explain what your position is at Atari and maybe explain a little bit about what you do there yeah, sure. and maybe what you did before you got to Atari as well. Yeah, I, you know, while we were, while we were pantomiming and, and to each other with, before the show started, uh, I did take a quick peek at some of the, the questions on there. And there was, oh, a, there was one question about, you know, what did you do before? Do you like video games? So I think a, I think a background yeah. would be kind of cool to do that. Um, I am, yeah. uh, I'm just a guy, right? Uh, I'm a, <laughs> originally a VCS backer uh, in, in, from the Indiegogo campaign. Uh -huh. um, I got my VCS. I loved it uh, for all its uh, quirks and warts and, and, and other really good stuff about the system. Uh, I kind of fell in love with the, with the system. Uh, and I've been an active uh, member, sometimes troll, uh, in the, the uh, BCS Discord, you know? Uh, I've had my troll well, Lots of trolls in there. You'll blend right in. I you appreciate know, your honesty. I, we, you we've, know, all, we've all done it, you know. Uh, I, <laughs> there, not all of us admit it, though. You know, I, I, there are times where I was a persistent pain in the rear end, and you know, and uh, but people put up with me, and, I, you know, I... I I always tended to be very positive but critical also of Atari when when I felt it was necessary to be critical. But always, you know, and I yeah. still carry that. I've, I've carried that throughout my career in other fields uh, as well as now is that you can be uh, constructive. Uh, you, you can be critical, but you've got to be constructive about yeah. it. If you're just... If you're just, you know, screaming to scream at the clouds, you're, you know, nothing's going to happen, right? So... Um, yeah, and I, th and I think you can tell when those kind of comments or questions come through, yeah. whether they are being constructive or destructive. Right. And because especially if they don't want, they don't want an answer, they just want to scream <laughs> into the void. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, you can feel the scream at the void. You know, there's a little bit of a wind that pulls you back and you're like, okay, all right. <laughs> okay. You, yeah. you've, you've let your feelings known. <laughs> Uh, but you know, I I came in, so I've only been in my position, you know, what it is uh, since September. Um, okay. But I've come straight Almost from the year. community. I was originally hired 
to kind of address some of the issues that uh, kept popping up uh, when, like, you know, Atari, people have to understand, Atari obviously is not the Warner Media days. Uh, Atari is really kind of, in terms of size, is like a small, smart, a small startup company with an extremely large name. So some yeah. things have to be sourced out a little bit. And sometimes, you know, our marketing and things like that, especially earlier, was, you know, sourced out to help, you know, uh, gain some traction in terms of social media and stuff like that. But some silly things were going out there like, hey, what's your highest score in Paul? You know, and, and, and the people, you know, <laughs> uh, us fans were just sitting there going, oh, there's no high score in Paul, you know. <laughs> That's and, right. <laughs> and as Atari fans, you're frustrated by yeah. seeing that. Uh, so I actually yeah. got tapped in to say, hey, they didn't say, the, the guy who hired me didn't say this, but basically this was what he said. He said, listen, you're old and you understand this stuff, <laughs> can you help us make sure that we're not saying Gray stupid in the beard. things? Yeah. yeah, I know. Unfortunately, yeah. this is also expressing my age. I'm slightly older than Atari. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I'm just under that. Just yeah. under that? So, mm -hmm. yeah, all, ar all around the same age. Right. Um, Andrew Davey asked, is David here officially? So you're, like, you're answering questions I on exist. behalf of Atari? I exist. Yes. Uh, there's, yes. there's nothing real, that, not not AI. There's not nothing like uh, fictional character. There's nothing ethereal about me. There's nothing uh, you know <laughs> imaginary. I'm real. Uh, so and I okay. work for Atari now. So yeah, I'm. Am I here officially? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> don't don't know how to answer that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I didn't sign something with Atari yeah. saying David's here. If that makes it official, he's yeah. here. He's answering questions about Atari. Um, I'm and I'm probably happy to as be here. Good as you're going to get. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, so I've 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 been with Atari since September. But really, the yeah. the crux of what I have been doing recently really hasn't started uh, in full steam until really January. Um, okay. through just various people uh, moving in positions and, and, and a couple people leaving uh, uh, the, the positions they were in, they're like, all of a sudden I had like, a certain, to a certain degree, the leash, uh, no one was holding my leash. And I said, well, if no one's holding my leash, I'm going to do stuff. And so I've been bringing <laughs> in a lot of developers and, and really trying yeah. to chase down in terms of, you know, getting the homebrew community out because that... You know, for VCS fans, uh, we're Atari fans. Most of the, all, you know, most of the people from the VCS yeah. fans have come from uh, the Atari Age, uh, you know, uh, pages and things like that. Uh, I have been too. I've been on Atari Age for a long time. I have always been a silent member of the Atari Age community. Um, okay. But I've been lurking since God, 2003, 2004, something like that. Um, so I. I I've been I've been watching you guys in the background, <laughs> in, <laughs> nothing, in the shadows. Nothing lurking. ominous about that at all. Uh, <laughs> so so I'm I'm since you've been there kind of a, officially since January. I'm I'm guessing you brought on Jan uh, John Van Ryzen uh -huh. for Alien Abduction, yep. uh, Dion for Amoeba Jump Tower of Rubble, yep. uh, Retro Game Quest and Catacombs for John Hancock mm -hmm. and. Uh, Daredevil, etc., for yeah. um, Lewis Hill and Bob yeah. Decker's Enzo. So you talk to all these people. I've talked to every single from one the of the community. Them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. And and I've actually been talking to them before Christmas uh, when I started out. I mean, literally, like the first two weeks, I said, I said, I'm reaching out to people because the VCS needs games. We want games. Uh, and you know, and and in regards to the homebrew community, they're great games. So. Why the, why the hell yeah. wouldn't I want to offer an opportunity to get it on our platform? It was really until January where I really had, I have a lot more leeway and, and power and no one's been bothering to stop me. <laughs> so so let, let, uh, tell us about like your personal history with mm -hmm. Atari consoles and sure. computers. Where does it date back to? It goes back to the 2600? Yeah, I, yeah okay. I, I have, I have, um, I had, a Sears telegame system, six switch telegames. I recently got, uh, yep. I, I, when I went to college in 1990, I gave uh, my Atari collection, which had, in retrospect, some really rare stuff. Uh, I mm -hmm. gave it to a kid who had, like, nothing. And he was like, and I just gave him my whole system. I said, you know, here, play this. this you know, this is for you. Um, awesome. So I've, I've had to restart my collection. But currently, I, I recently reacquired another telegame system, just like I used to have. This time with the nice yeah. uh, 
uh, game center that's te- uh, that's uh, telegames style, not the Atari wood grain, but the telegame. Oh. Ooh, with Ooh, no cracks. Very proud of that one. That's uh, pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I've got uh, Atari 2600 Junior. Um, I got a 7800. Yep. That's my main console. This is my 7800. You know, because yeah. why, why have, yeah, why have two consoles if you can do it one with a really great system? Um, yeah. But in terms of other consoles, uh, let's see. Let me run them down. So I've got I've got those Atari consoles. Uh, the PlayStation 2, uh, the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, uh, Xbox 360, Xbox uh, Xbox One. Um, I got a Switch. I got a Wii U. Uh, once upon a oh, I have an N, I have an N sixty four. Once upon a time, for like a hot minute, someone gave me a, a GameCube, but I was touring the country uh, in my previous uh, uh, incarnation, and I lost. I literally lost it. I think in Indianapolis. So, oh no, uh, somewhere, <laughs> no. someone in Indianapolis <laughs> had a GameCube, and I hope they really enjoyed it. So. <laughs> didn't go straight in the garbage right, right away. <laughs> um, um so i have a lot of games do i play games absolutely I play a lot of games um but i don't yeah. surprisingly i don't spend a huge amount of well i play i play something almost every day and i have to be honest i play my vcs almost every single day more than i play anything else right now i'm 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 knee deep uh, in Zelda uh, Tears of the Kingdom because that oh it's so good it's so good same with same with Tanya my wife yeah oh my god she, yeah. every day she's playing it so. oh the the devs whoever <laughs> whoever was the lead dev uh, when they started design the de- uh, the depths uh, the underground section on there they had gone yeah. cave diving and they've gone cave exploring because <laughs> the atmosphere of that and the lighting oh chef kiss oh brilliant. <laughs> uh, um. Bob D. Crescenzo, Pac-Man Plus, uh, hey, like to your comment about 7800 being your main system. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. very it, happy about that. It's it's a great system. You know, we all know the history of what happened with the 7800, and it's a crying shame, you know. What, oh, what yeah. world yeah. would have been like? Not given it, a chance. Yeah, what the world would have been like if it came out in 84 like it was supposed to. But, oh, well. Yep. Well, so, now is the renaissance for it. Yeah. It is it is booming, the 7800 homebrew community. Yeah, and Bob um, is and, such and, a brilliant... Uh, I mean, it's amazing what he cranks out for the 7800. Uh, so, oh, yeah. my God, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Um, like, you you mentioned that you were a lurker for a long time mm-hmm. in, in on the Atari age, because my, my next question was about... Um, how much about homebrew did you know before going to the into the job and were you aware of the Atari age community oh, yeah. but that's oh you kind yeah. of answered yeah so yeah. how much in of homebrew did you play as opposed to like uh, classic games not a ton i have yeah. i have i have a few homebrews the 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 one that i wanted the most uh and oh it was one of the consoles i forgot to mention uh, i have two 5200s um two yeah wow. i have a four i have an unmodified four uh, four yeah. port with no cracks or anything in it. Um, nice. and, and then I got a two port, which I modified to do composite out. Uh, I figured the four oh, port, good. four port, I wasn't going to touch. Uh, I was like, I'm going to keep that <laughs> original. So the two port, I decided yeah. to just hack to hell and, and make it more convenient for modern. Uh, I have a 32 inch, uh, uh, Sony Trinitron TV, uh, oh, nice. for okay. my older consoles. And then, uh, you know, I have a nice one, uh, 1080p, uh, 47 inch uh, LCD for the more modern stuff. Since okay. I'm only like yeah, five yeah. and a half feet away from my couch uh, on that thing, I was like, I don't need 4K. <laughs> 1080p at 47 Not, no. is perfectly. You can't perfect. see the pixels. No. Yeah. It's all you know, good. <laughs> it's good. So um, um, the 5200, so I got, I literally got the 5200 that had, the guy sold it with 20 games, four ports, uh, 5200. I bought it explicitly so that I can play Adventure 2. Okay. That was yep. the only reason yep. I got the 5200. <laughs> well, that's a nice starter collection. 20 games. That's <laughs> really good. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, I, forgot to, I forgot to put on my vest. Can I put on my vest? My streamer. There we go. Oh, there, there we go. go. Now we're in. Now I feel complete. <laughs> now I feel <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, uh, Thomas Yench um, asked mm-hmm. uh, if you can code. Have you done any coding? before i am i am like the uh the the seer at delphi i can see but i can't act 
Uh, I don't know how to code. I really want to okay. learn how to do it. But I, I'm one of those people that I cannot read a manual to save my life. I need to have someone sitting next to me, and I do it, and being guide and, and kind of goof around. We eat a bag of pixie sticks as you, sh as, as you show me how to do these basic <laughs> things. And then for me, it's always that first step. That first step is 10 feet high, and then every single step after that, yeah. I blaze through it. It's me getting past that okay. first step. So I, I'm I'm trying to learn. I want to learn Unity so I can make more modern games uh, for the VCS. Right. Um, but I also have an interest in one day, you know, delving into, you know, uh, all the uh, Batari and you know, and, and doing that. But no, I yeah. can't code to save my life. So mock okay. me, <laughs> mock me from there. <laughs> oh, it's fine. <laughs> well, you can enjoy the games without knowing the code behind them. And, and I love I I love the and what I really enjoy most for what I've been doing now, uh, and I hope to be doing more of this is uh, to kind of answer a past question. Uh, I used to be yeah. uh, I used to be a lot of things. I used to be an astrophysicist. Um, I used to be okay. uh, for most of my life I was a lighting designer for theater and stage uh, productions. Um, oh, okay. You know I worked uh, off Broadway. I worked for a few designers on Broadway. Uh, no design no designs myself on Broadway. Don't want to don't want to. Uh, paint a rosier picture than what it was uh, <laughs> but i did that for 20 years uh for lighting and i would tour the country with the kennedy uh, kennedy center in dc uh for for tours for their uh, uh children's theater programs uh as a lighting director and things like that so for me the collaborative process of being a designer and working with other people to create something mm. is at my core and my joy so being able to, the, I'm now starting to work with game developers uh, to say, hey, let's let's do this, let's do that. Oh, did you think about this? And you know, and, and talking and trying to be in a more collaborative process than saying, hey, I want this game and I need it on this date, right? And, yeah. and just being more yeah, yeah. helpful, hopefully helpful to those uh, those developers too. Yeah. Okay, we're going to get into it now. So uh, I hope you're ready for some of these questions coming up. You know, there I, are some I, skeptics in the audience. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I, I, someone, someone said to me, not, not from Atari, but someone else is in it, what the yeah. hell are you doing? You're just walking in with a target on your back. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like no, you know what? I, I'm not, just, I know there's skepticism out there. I know there's a bad history that Atari had where it got traded around like a hack from company to company for a little while. Those were dark, those were dark years. Um, but, you know, I think these last two years have shown a lot more improvement that w they've gone back, you know, with, with, with Wade Rosen coming in as CEO, who enjoys game, who plays games, who's, you know, I, I don't know if I can qualify him, but, you know, I don't know if you can say he's a hardcore gamer, but he's a gamer. And he went mm -hmm. back to make games. So Atari's been making games, you know. And sometimes there's some flack and say, well, it's just Centipede and, and, and Asteroids. And it's like, what do you want? That's great foundation work. You know, you take your classics yeah. and you give something new. They didn't just slap a, a little bit of paint. I mean, some people may say this, but they didn't put a little bit of paint on it. They reimagined the game in keeping the essence of the game, of Centipede. Centipede Recharge yeah. is still Centipede. It's just has more stuff to it and it still plays the same so you have to start you know after such a long time of not producing games or hardware or anything you have to start out with your foundation and your strongest foundation are your ips like centipede asteroids breakout uh but they did do yeah. a deep cut with black widow recharge who would have seen, who would have thought black widow oh, yeah. you know so black widow is an amazing game and and you know if you didn't put out the classics or reimagine them people would be asking where are the classic games? Yeah. You Why don't we have updates of the classic yeah. games? It's, yeah. it's hard to... You can't yeah. win. There's no <laughs> way of winning. Yeah. So I come in on, yeah. I'm coming on here not winning, and I'm not here to convince <laughs> anyone of anything because I can't. You can only yeah. look at the things that I say and the things that we have done and are going to do, and I can only yeah. try to, uh, to reassure some things and just say, hey, you know, we're, we're trying to prove every single day on there, and there's going to be people who will never believe that. And that's okay. It's all right. Yeah. So, so, so what you was know, the they're going to have some, 
<laughs> I haven't got to it. Um, so they, they're going to have some critical and pros possibly confrontational sure. questions. Sure. Just to, um, a number of the developers and community members here have only encountered the pointy end of the stick from Atari sure. in the past via the, say, legal department uh, sure. about IP, copyright, trademarks. Yep, and yep, yep. I'm not excluded from this as That's well. That's right. That's right. That's correct. Yep. Uh, uh, in in a couple couple ways. Um, but who cares about that? Um, but I tend to look on the bright side of things um, okay. when people criticize. Say, for example, they criticize my show, mm -hmm. and and I come at it from um, <coughs> they're coming at it from a place of love. Sure. Absolutely. I'm, I'm saying because they want it to be better. Yep. They want the show to be better. They want Atari to be better and represent. The community Absolutely. and the work they've put into the community. So I think these questions are coming from the same place. Yeah. I have a love of what they remember Atari yeah. was in the past, in their childhood, what and what they might want to see Atari be again. And remember, I, and I, Atari, I'm from the same pool of people. You, exactly. You grew up with Atari. I grew up with Atari. Mm -hmm. Erlen's a baby, so he doesn't know what Atari is. You're I'm just here, guys. You're I'm just here. Yeah, he's, he's here to play the games. That's what he's here for. Have some fun, and that's why we have him on because he doesn't have. Yeah, I don't know what's the going past. On. You he don't just have the enjoys the games. You don't have the bag. No baggage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm a, yeah. So, so the Atari Age community has has maintained and built up something very special for the mm -hmm. past 20, 25 years, cool. and they, of course. Are, are cautious about any claims they might hear from from you or Atari. So I'm very happy to have you on sure. to answer their questions. Yeah. I mean, people say, okay, talk is one thing, is doing is the other, but they have yep. to hear the talk first, and the doing is going to come with time. Yep. They're going to see if if Atari comes through on the promises of like say supporting the community, embracing the community, continuing on. Yep. What they've maintained in the absence of Absolutely. Atari over these past decades. Right. So here we go. Okay. Uh, oh, <laughs> what is it popping up there? Okay. Nathan oh. Strum asks a question, which is really important, okay. especially the people who watch this stream and play games on the, on systems that are decades old. Like I play on original systems. Yep. Um, why should somebody buy an Atari VCS? If you had to tell somebody about it, who had no knowledge of it, how would you sell it to, say, a classic Atari fan, which is most of this audience, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, a modern PC gamer, mm -hmm. which is mo this guy, actually, yep. Erlen, yep. Um, or a casual smartphone gamer? How would you sell it to somebody who's, who's, who's a skeptic? Why should I buy one? And this is him. My opinion of it is negatively colored by having followed it from its original announcement through a really sketchy development history. Mm -hmm. I can't walk into a local store and play it for myself either. Sure. So there you go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's a good question. You know, what? when I talk about the VCS, I always talk it from the fact that I'm a fan, I'm a backer, I got it, I liked it. Uh, if you had to pick, it, I, and I'm going to be honest, if you had to pick between a Switch and a, and, a, and, and a VCS, there's no reason why you wouldn't pick the Switch. It has a bigger game uh, of library, a, a larger library to choose from, right? Um, yeah. And, yeah. and that's Part of the problem that the VCS has had, there's nothing that really signifies it as something super special. Uh, where it becomes special is, is its flexibility and its openness, right? Uh, the Atari yeah. OS side, you know, the, 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 you know the, the console side of things. I like it a lot. Some people think it's a negative. I think it's a positive in terms of its simplicity. It's got the, what's called the dashboard, the, 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 the cells, uh, the portals. It's actually yeah. called portals. Um, yeah. That it's like, oh, there's these boxes and it's simplistic. Now, a few things are going to be added in the future. Uh, you know, we're going to update that. But we've, we've introduced being able to rearrange that home page so you can order. What I like about it is that it is simplistic. You can cater it to what you want. You don't have, and this is one of, I, I don't want to overly criticize uh, other companies, right? That's not a, it's not a good look for. But, you know, other, yeah. uh, other consoles that will not be named there's a lot of advertisements. There's a lot of come and watch these movies, come buy this, do this. The VCS right. is very out of your way. I kind of attribute it to, uh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to say that either. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing between you and your games or your streaming service or what you want with the Atari OS. I like that okay. simplicity uh, and that, you know, you put, you rearrange your homepage to what games and what services you want to do. And there's nothing between, Atari's not be, 
between you and what you want to do with this with the system uh you know and that goes also in terms with the hardware too if you want to take the vcs and you know get rid of atari os i think that's a mistake personally but uh you know <laughs> and turn it into an emulator it'll do great as for like bado um i've had some ps2 right. running on there it's not the quietest so it's like you go up you go up the gamecube and 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 older okay. you know then you've got a great looking small footprint solid machine uh and so it's great that's also kind of been kind of an achilles heel of the atari os because it's so flexible people do a lot of different things with it and then they're not in the atari ecosystem where you know we can <laughs> make some money from and selling games and and helping right. the developers who are developing games because people have flashed it over to say bato sarah but you know that's so you have to convince them like oh we have good enough offerings in the atari os with the game library that and, exists and is coming up to uh, keep it installed right right <laughs> But there's such a ne there's such a negative base. I mean, the the YouTube heads out there with you, know, you do a search on Atari VCS, and I mm. I've had people literally say to my face, "Oh, the VCS? I thought that was a scam. I thought that was a money grab." Well, well thanks for being <laughs> thanks for being blunt in my face. Uh, and it's like, no, <laughs> you know, if it was yeah. a scam. What am I doing on a show? You know, what if it's a money grab? I mean, it, why it are we exi investing it money? It exists. It exists. Like, like it's in it's in front of me. And unlike uh, the Coleco Chameleon in right. television, Amico, those don't exist. Right. But this that, exists. It's a real product with a price, and you can take it or leave it. Yeah. And, right. But that's that's not a good enough bar to set that it exists. Right. No. We we look. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's you know, a low bar. I don't want yeah. I don't want to rest on that. It's like, well, we exist, and and that's that's great. We we <laughs> we've done that in a difficult time and through some challenging circumstances. <clears throat> yeah. But that's not yeah, the bar we want to set. Yeah. We want to set the bar for other things. And has the VCS stumbled out of the gate when it first started out? Absolutely, it did. Full face plant in terms of launching a console. There's no denying that. I would be I would be a full face liar if I said otherwise. Um, but yeah. we're investing in it. We're putting things in there, and it is an object lesson. It's a learning, and it's also the the groundwork for fu for the future, right? Uh, because yeah. this is not the end for whatever Atari is going to do. You know, more things are going to be coming out that's VCS related, that's not VCS related, that's coming out from <laughs> Atari. And this is this is the this is the groundwork. This is what we're going to learn from. That's going to evolve into what comes next when that comes. Right. Uh, right now, the VCS yeah. has. I, I hate this. It's a low powered PC. For what it's trying to mm. do. You know, retro reimagined, uh, you know, homebrews, uh, that double A level of games, which is completely ignored by just about everyone except Nintendo. But Nintendo is doing its own weird Nintendo it, things, right? Yeah, I was just about to say it's it's comparable to people criticizing the Switch. Oh, it's underpowered compared to the PS5 and, right. and the Xbox, but it's its own thing. It's, its, it's own doing thing. its own thing with its right. own games, and people appreciate it for exactly. that. Um, and it lives in its own, own sphere of right. gaming yeah 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 and and atari is going to it, it, atari is doing is trying to do that is trying to be that middle range you know that double a titles uh the indies mm -hmm. the the home brewers that there's a home that they can feel good in uh and not have yeah. to run through rings to get their games on the system uh so we we you know yeah a developer, a really respected developer, Tony Barnes, uh, he said the best way to sum up the, the Atari VCS, working with Atari and the VCS, is that it's a low-friction platform. Uh, we don't, you know, we yeah. we try to do our due diligence about testing your game, make sure there's no bugs and all that. Do we miss mm. things? Yeah, we don't have the, uh, I haven't built the fully airtight QA system, but we're getting there. Uh, but we yeah. test it out and try to collaborate as much as we can i mean there's a certain point where i can't interfere and say well you know you should do this for your game i mean the the developer has their creative process and their vision and i don't want to step on that yeah but i want to give constructive criticism when i can um so yeah. you know for what we're trying to service and what we're trying to deal with this you know the vcs is quite a powerful system and will be for quite a while yeah. so i i I, yeah. I dismiss uh you know when people say it's a low, it's just a low-powered PC. 
you know, compared to the, you know, to the uh, PlayStation 5, well, yeah, of course, but we're not trying to do PlayStation 5 things. It's a powerhouse because it's running Horizon Zero Dawn and, and God of War, which yeah. I love, but that's not the, the Atari's target. Yeah. Did I answer the question? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, a little here and there, here, like, okay. um, you know, uh, how does a, how does the Atari appeal to different demographics? And, um, right. like, I think you, you should at least specifically address, um, the demographic of the people watching, which okay. are the old school, uh, Atari enthusiasts sure. okay. who, who For currently Atari. play mm -hmm. on, on old consoles that are right. 35, 40, 45 years old. Yeah. yeah. Well, one of the things that we're definitely, that I know Wade Rosen, his, his, uh, one of his passions are, I don't want to speak for him. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not part of the PR department or anything like that, but he has a passion for yeah. game preservation. And so this is in so, a small way, you know, one way, not the only way, but a way to preserve some of these games that we enjoy uh, and to go forward, mm. you know, to be able to play it on, you know, a 1080p, a 4K TV and, you know, whatever comes next, you know, holographic uh, projections. <laughs> yeah. um, That's right. Because, you know, as a fan, I look at it as uh, a game is a game. I don't really give a damn if someone says, well, this is a retro and this is a this is an indie and this is a triple A game. Yeah. If I like the game, I'm going to play the game. I play I am yeah. uh, a sucker for adventure. It's been my go-to game my entire life. I there, there, almost every single day I play adventure, just to relax, just to say I have a couple minutes. I want to play a round of adventure. I know every yeah. item when they when when it gets randomized on on level three, <laughs> I still know the patterns and then that I go through it. It's my moment of zen, and I play it every just about every single day, and I play it on the yeah. VCS. And I play it on an emulation machine that I have. I have a, I have a, uh, I have a, uh, um, an Alienware Alpha Two that I uh, put Bato Sarah okay. on, and I can run PlayStation Three stuff legally, of course. <laughs> that's right. You own the discs. It's all good. It's all good. Yep. You're making backups. <laughs> that's right. I, actually, we're, we're all, we're I all good here. <laughs> I did. Um, um, yeah. So that so for uh, for Atari fans, you know. Uh, does it play the same as original hardware? What's nothing the does. appeal to them? Yeah, does yeah. it play like the original, uh, like original hardware? Well, nothing does. That's why it's original hardware. But we are yeah. going to be doing more. We're going to be bringing in, uh, you know, we uh, open invita invitation to home brewers to come in and bring their stuff. It is one other avenue to, you know, to for people to enjoy their works and the creations that they made. Certainly not the only one, but we want to be a part of that and support those community and those developers. So for Atari fans, it's a good way to, you know, back up archive, play games, play new games, new imagine. I mean, I want I want a modern version of Amoeba Jump. Now that we got it on the VCS and that, what a great yeah. Amoeba. Yeah, what what a great idea to make <laughs> yeah. it like you know, will it be three D and you from the perspective of the Amoeba? I don't know, but boy, that'd be cool <laughs> as hell. Right. You know, we yeah, want three D platforming. Yeah. But you there know, you we want to create that pipeline of saying, I've created this. Here are other ways I can keep going with this idea or this gameplay and reimagine it. Just kind of like how Atari has recharged. Why can't we have homebrew recharged? If someone's interested in that, if they're interested. In it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so while playing the Atari Twenty Six Hundred and Seventy Eight Hundred homebrews, mm -hmm. I, I plugged in a keyboard and dropped into the menus of the emulators mm -hmm. and noticed that you're using Stella mm -hmm. Six Point Six, mm -hmm. and that's from November Twenty Twenty One. Okay. And uh, for for the twenty six hundred emulation and Mame point two three zero from mm -hmm. March twenty twenty one, both are not the newest versions, right. but that's not really a problem because the homebrew games you're running run perfectly fine right. on them. They're not right. needing the newer versions. Um, but do you know if each game is wrapped in an emulator or is there one emulator for the box? It's, it's one for the emulator. whole system. See the okay, it's one that's emulator. a much better thing. <laughs> See, because the, yeah. the problem the problem and this is where uh you know where we start getting into uh IP issues and why lawyers start to get uh nosing around and, and emulators. One of the things about emulators uh is that the reason they exist is because emulators can exist as long as they don't contain ROMs, right? So to package a game with a raw with an emulator right. wrapped around it would be breaking uh, most emulators uh, rules and and therefore you know that's not that's not legal 
you know, so we can get in, in trouble that way. But there's nothing in terms yeah. of, you know, selling, uh, you know, a console that has the emulators on there and then ROMs are sold separately as something else that then be utilized by that. Um, it would be, in, in some cases, it would be so much easier if we could just do an emulator wrapped around a game and, and it's self-contained package. But because of the yeah. way things, uh, you know, a lot of the emulators uh, wrote their rules and the, and, the, and the way some laws are, you can't do that legally in most cases. Yeah. So. Yeah, and, and some of the developers from um, Stella watch the show, so this is a very yeah. interesting yeah. topic uh, for them. And, it, and it's actually better the way you have it because you can just update Stella, mm -hmm. you know, to 6.7 or Otherwise, whatever we're updating beyond. every single ROM, yeah. What a, what a nightmare yeah, that would be. and the wrappings around it, yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, Alan the Fur's question in the chat, are plus ROM functions supported on the VCS? I mean, it's going to be supported as you update the yeah. emulators. Yeah. 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 May, yeah. Whatever particular one he's talking about, you know, it may not be up, you know, may not be supported right now. The 2600 has been, been no problem. Unfortunately, we're having, and we were just talking about this a couple of days ago about uh, either tweaking the, the 7800 uh, emulator or putting in a new one. Um, uh, we've got right. suggestions from Atari age people. Uh, from various sources that said, oh, this is this is probably a better, more up-to-date system. So we're looking yeah, at... Yeah, because you're going to have to run EXO, which is like boundary-pushing yes. game yeah. from Muddy Funster, and I don't think MAME, is, MAME from two years ago is going to cut it. I think it, it actually just runs, it, fry it runs, itself. It, no, it actually is running fine. It's actually running oh, fine. Oh, great. Now, okay, what, what the problem has been cropping up, and, and, you can, and, and for Bob's game, uh, Failsafe, um, is yeah. that... I officially don't support the joystick. You can still play the game with the oh, joystick. Okay. You can still play in the joystick. Unfortunately, because of the paddle control on there, it's giving some junk input oh, on there. So okay. as you're playing and you're going to the left, it will start to get, it take up some a little bit of uh, input from that paddle rotation and cause some yeah. tweakiness. So you can still play yeah. with the joystick, but because it's not the smoothest experience, I've said officially... You, the 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 uh, you know the the uh, the modern controller is the only one that you can play with. You can play with the joystick, right. but you're going to have that little bit of why is it going all of a sudden to the left real quick? You know, and it's the paddle. Yeah. Play. So we have to tweak. I wonder it. if you can like pass some parameters to ignore paddle or something. Right. I don't know. Yeah, we, we have to yeah. look into that in the emulator. So right now, that's currently, and that's what's been holding me back. I'm putting a lot of seven eight hundred stuff right away on there. So. You know, Muddy Vision's yeah. uh, EXO, I played it. Again, I play it just fine, and it plays pretty dang well with the joystick, but I want that joystick yeah. experience. It, it's a 7800. It's a, you know, I want that, but it's not the smoothest at this moment. So I've been, like, holding back and saying, like, right, we're going to hold on that one right now. We're planning on doing EXO, but we might just right. have to hold until we can figure out that whole emulator uh, system That's right now. That would be the smoothest experience <laughs> that it's possibly uh, can be. Uh, or at the very least, at the moment, it's only officially supported by the modern controller, and you can play, and then okay. hopefully we can catch up with the, the smooth playing for the joystick. And, and continuing on with a controller, a, a mm -hmm. controller question as yep. well. Um, I'm playing, I, you know, I, I start playing the 2600 games, mm -hmm. and really there is just the single button. Uh, with the modern controller, right? And do you and there, but there's many switches on the 2600. There's yeah. color black and white, difficulties, reset, um, select. I think a lot um, of there's a whole bunch on, of buttons on those menus and context uh, buttons. I believe they're they're mapped for that. So okay. if you try those two, the two smaller buttons that surround the the Fuji button, I think those okay. uh, that will manipulate the the, the difficulty I'll, switches on there. I'll I'll try it again, but I I. Didn't I didn't I pressed all the buttons and I didn't see anything okay. changing or coming up because because I was playing a game and I was like oh I wonder if I can reset to the menu right, again right. but I could I couldn't yeah. but um, there's obviously there's things we still have to keep fixing on and 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 to be honest there wasn't you know the whole I'm bringing in the homebrew community you know uh, now and yeah. en engineers haven't been ready for me bringing in homebrew. <laughs> <laughs> to say, oh, right. we, we need to still tweak the uh, this emulator because we're it, it's a little bit of a learning curve of oh that's not functioning, let's write that one down and you know and we and then we try to fix from there so. 
Yeah, and I mean, Halloween Jack has a very similar question. Why can't we play Missile Command with a trackball or the analog stick mm -hmm. as well? Or, you know, anything that you can plug in through um, DB9 to um, USB adapters. Well, there's... Um, um, like the, uh, yeah, yeah, there's a gentleman uh, who's, who's actually, like near my home in uh in dc uh, icode icode.com he makes these uh, usb to uh um um the ds9 uh adapters and yeah. 5200 and i've used that and that's worked out really nicely uh but okay yeah in terms of original hard original controllers being put into the vcs there's work to be done there's work to be done and we yeah. and we need to start tackling that uh is there an eta for yeah. that not at the moment. Uh, trying to do a bunch yeah. of things that, you know, that soon you'll start seeing some announcements soon that are they're coming down the pipe, and it's like, okay, cool, cool, that's awesome. And then you know, and trying to deal with the VCS too. So, yeah, because if you plugged in a trackball and it's expecting a joystick, you'd right. have to drop into the menus, which is a little difficult for people who don't have a keyboard plugged into, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah. there's some. Yeah. Yeah, so some things that have to be we, we've got out. we've got some growing to do in terms of that for for, for you know the for perfect support of that. But it's yeah. it there's interest and there's you know and not interest, but there's there's motivation to to deal with that. But lots of fires out there, lots of fires, and uh, you know <laughs> I'm sure you've got a big list, a big to do list, yeah. big to do list. So you know, <laughs> not that it's not uh, an important item, but it, that one that one in particular is a little bit lower on the list. Hate to, hate hate to say that, but it's a little lower, but. It is something that we yeah. are cognizant of, and I know I would like to. Yeah, and and you do. There is an Atari VCS forum in the Atari Atari Age mm -hmm. forums. Yeah. Um, and do you encourage people to go in there and say this doesn't work, or I want to see this feature, etc. Please do. Yeah. You know, uh, I've also uh, I've also given. I mean, uh, there's a thread uh, somewhere. I can't remember where I put that. Uh, um, I, what do they call it? Uh, someone to yell and scream at. Uh, yeah, that, that's your thread. Yeah, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and and I put my email on there. Email me if you have. I, and I've had a few <laughs> yeah. people email me. I've had a couple people who sent me a novel of things. You know, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I there's have a, one there's person. A, some passionate people there's out passionate there. Passionate people out there. I get it. I have one person <laughs> who sent me basically War and Peace on things that I need to do. Uh, <laughs> and you know, and it's and it's great. And and. I know you, you're out there. I know you're out there. I've read just about everything, but I have to be honest. I didn't read everything because it's there's a lot, a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, I mean, these yeah. people love the Atari. They love yeah. this ecosystem. They, they want it to be better. Yeah. Um, so there seems to be a bit, you've touched on this, but there seems to be an, uh, been an evolution mm -hmm. of Atari in the past couple of years coming from NFTs, crypto, sure. casino hotels. Yeah. To more of a concentration on the console, mm -hmm. digital game distribution, and even now physical carts. Yeah. Um, some people's image of modern Atari may still be stuck on those earlier ventures, sure. in, including um, Nathan Strom, who has a question, who, uh, who asks, you'll find a lot of skeptics among, amongst Atari fans. I'm one of them. Sure. Atari has been badly mismanaged repeatedly over decades and has in many cases caused irreparable harm to the reputation and damaged reputations with those fans who grew up buying and playing Atari game. What has changed? What makes the current management at Atari better than what came before? And what are Atari's plans moving forward that should mm -hmm. make fans and skeptics alike believe that this iteration of Atari is any different? What is Atari planning to do actually to be taken seriously as a game company again, rather than just a licensor of the same few old IPs over and over again, or a company making desperate cash grabs at cryptocurrency, hotels, and speaker hats? Okay. Spicy. <laughs> yeah, it is spicy, yeah. <laughs> uh you know what? What are our plans? We're making games. I, I, it's as simple as that. We're making games. Uh, over the last, you know, two years, uh, we've been making games. Um, you know, we do have a licensing department, so there is that uh, Atari Hotel. I, we, I have zero involvement in that. Uh, and frankly, Atari doesn't have a ton of involvement in it. That's a licensing thing, and someone, you know, who is yeah. who is doing the atari hotel is doing this hotel um so it's not yeah. like it's not like man hour you know tons of man hours is being spent by atari focusing on on hotels um it's a licensing thing um you know right i personally would have liked to see like the hotel esports arena kind of thing and they i don't know if they're still kind of doing that or what but you know 
there's a little bit. If it was like tied in with a convention center and sports, uh, esports arena kind of idea, then it's like, yeah, that's a hell of a good idea. You know, gaming and esports, and and you stay there yeah. at the hotel. You know, um, but what all those plans are in terms of like specifically that hotel thing, I, I don't know, and I don't really want to be involved in that. Uh, the cryptocurrency <laughs> right. thing, that's. There's a lot that we are continuing to do with Web3, and it's important to distinguish Web3 from cryptocurrency. The Web3 technologies about creating communities and interactiveness uh, with uh, different products and, and the, potentially the games and all that, that is more of what Atari is focused on in the future of what Web3 and that connectivity and that information, how it involves leaderboards and being able to send you information about, you know, to other players of, you know, you just achieved that and all that. That is really more of what uh, Atari is focusing on. The cryptocurrency and the mm -hmm. NFTs uh, was more of a it's part of the culture kind of thing, especially when there was the big, you know, big thing about NFTs. But, you know, Atari, yeah. didn't, Atari didn't really jump on that per se as, as deep as like a lot of things like we won't, at least not from a VCS, we are not going to do anything with microtransactions or anything like that or NFT kind of things. It, it, that's we don't like that's good <laughs> we don't like we don't like that um we don't yeah. like pay to win now dlcs to extend and expand on con uh, contract we don't currently do that but we are looking to do that to build the infrastructure on there because i think that's that's yeah. a good thing to say here's this game and here's a dlc to expand on that here's more mission packs or whatever than that that's content and that's something that you know we can hopefully we're going to get you know be able to put in soonish to expand on that. But in terms of micro trans transactions, we're not big fans of that. Um, so, you know, no. and the <laughs> one NFTs that, uh, that we were really heavy in was, uh, from the, uh, butch, I always get it wrong. Billy butcher, butcher, Billy, butcher, Billy. I always get it backwards. I always get it confused with, yeah. uh, with the guy from, uh, the, from the character in the boys, uh, <laughs> which is a whole other context. <laughs> um, but his artwork is amazing. Uh, I don't know if you've yeah. seen that with the adventure and all that. If you look up Butcher Billy. I, I briefly looked at the uh, the NFT website that Atari right. has up and his artwork. And, I mean, it looks nice artwork. Yeah. I have no interest in NFTs. Well, but... But, but what we've <laughs> also just recently done is that we've taken, like, the base original of those artworks, and you now can purchase... Uh, frame as a frame dart. I got a metal plate. Uh, what are they? Ten by eight of adventure. Because again, I'm an adventure junkie, uh, and it's a, yeah. a print on a metal plate. So you can get like you know all these Butcher Billy, uh, you know the base originals, not the variants that the NFTs kind of thrive on. But you can get those as as just pure artwork. So we're not just you know it. Yes, there's some NFTs, but it's not just living in the NFT world because you know, who wants them? I'm I'm not a huge fan of NFTs the way they were done. I understand what it was originally designed to do, and it makes sense as a technology level for artists to be able to digitally sign their things to then be able to sell their digital artworks to someone and and have that confidence. But it just got exploited in really nasty ways that we're all familiar with. Yeah, out and, of hand. Yeah, yeah, and 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 Atari's not looking to delve in that. We're looking to you know when we do do these NFTs. Uh, you know, is that there is some value to it. It's not just a bunch of bored apes. There's artwork. There's, you know, it's... And we had a, a printing service to take your NFTs to then print it as a poster or this and that. Um, you know, so... Right. So are they completely... Any technology can be used for evil yeah. or good, and Absolutely. it was overblown and exploited, um, but there Absolutely. are, you know, somewhat useful uses for NFTs there for, is. like you said, digital signing and stuff. Yeah. Getting and, a little bit off track, and about yeah, this, but but, uh, but the, the web, <laughs> the web, we are looking at Web three as a way of building communities and and technology and how, you know, how our interconnectedness can interconnectedness can work, uh, you know, together in a gaming community. So you know, we are still pursuing that. So yeah, and and the last question about yeah. um, what. Atari is doing moving forward mm -hmm. um, kind of ties into this next one. Okay. 
from Pseudographics. As a co-developer, how should we approach Atari if we'd like to see our games? Mm -hmm. And he says specifically Atari 8-bit computer games. That ties into another question. Right. Um, but um, on the new VCS, may maybe you can step us through how others have come to you, like Dion and, and Bob and John Hancock's games came to be on the Atari VCS. Sure. And what criteria you're looking for in games and what support that you'll see in the future for other Atari platforms yeah like the 5200 and 8-bit mm -hmm. Lynx, jaguar even sure. atari st maybe yeah 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 um so way the way it started out most of it is me taking suggestions from people on the discord me excuse me me looking at games me, you know me spending many hours not working uh looking at games <laughs> and going what the hell is going to be fun and then reaching out to them and says, hey, uh, I like your game. Do you have any interest in the VCS? And then what I usually, you know, my typical MO is I reach out. If they respond back to me, uh, I say, hey, can we meet? Can we, you know, virtually meet? And, I, and we have yeah. a conversation. And I talk about their game because I've, you know, most likely I've played it. And mm -hmm. the criteria for, you know, what kind of games uh, are on the VCS, I guess in a certain way I'm kind of a gatekeeper. If I find it fun... I hope other people find it fun. And that's the basic th the thing. You know, obviously there are things like, and this is where it gets sticky with the home, some homebrew uh, uh, creations. You know, is it violating IP law? You know, um, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and that's, unfor you know, that is a, that is a criteria that, you know, it's like, I, I can't put, you know, I can't put something that's, uh, you know, that's someone else's IP or, an Atari IP that we didn't give permission to do, um, you know, IP. Right, and that actually ties into another question. Sure. Might as well interject it so. right here. Thought so. <laughs> is is um, will Atari mm -hmm. help or facilitate with their IPs or other people's IPs? Because you, mm -hmm. Atari has been buying up scads yeah. of IPs from yeah. classic uh, gaming companies, arcade yeah. titles. Etc. I have a list of it. List yeah. of them later. But I remember there was one question them. specifically focusing on battle zones, <laughs> and I, uh, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> sure. So. And so, so people will yeah. come to you and they say, "Oh, I want my game yeah. on the VCS, yeah. but it's not my game. Right. It's a, a port of somebody else's game, possibly even Atari's game. Yeah. And they made it without permission right. to begin with, but now they're coming to you and saying, can you legitimize this now? That, what can we do? So the legitimizing of, of, uh, of Atari IPs is tricky, right? Because here's where, here's where IP uh, issues start to come in there. Any company, this is not just Atari, this is you know, Nintendo, PlayStation, or, or uh, you know, any studio. They have to protect their IPs because if there's a precedence of them not protecting their IPs, they lose their IPs. Right. Yeah. And then, By law, then, you have to protect it. By law, yeah. you have to protect it. You have to protect it. So it's not, it's, this is the, this is going to be the tricky part. It has been the tricky part and it's always going to be the tricky part. There is so much passion and there is so much creativity in the homebrew community, but we can't just turn a blind eye to when, and not, when, when something that's copyrighted and trademarked is being used without permission. You know, I'm 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 sorry. I hate to be the I hate to be the grim reaper of some of those of some of those ideas, but it just can't you can't do that. And so, you know, we have to protect. Uh, you know, as a company, you have to protect your properties, logos, uh, you know, uh, game IPs, and all that. Otherwise, you risk losing them. And the other side yeah. of it too is that if. If someone makes a game, uh, let's say that you know we just recently acquired uh, Berserk, right? Uh, and yeah. w you know we're going to do something with Berserk because you know Berserk has been idle, right? Uh, because you know uh, yeah. uh, Stearns has been not, you know, they've been focusing on pinball and other things too, so they haven't done anything with it, you know. Um, but if there's a game out there that you know uh, Berserk re <laughs> Rear End Invaders or something like that, you know, <laughs> any. What, what people have to remember, especially our, our group of people right now, we are so in the know of Atari and video games that we mm. forget that almost everyone else is not in the know. And a lot of people are the, you know, the quote unquote normies. They don't know the difference between this is a homebrew and this is an actual game. 
So if you have uh, you know someone who makes a game that was sarcastic or something like that, and that paints a picture on someone who's Atari, especially for someone who has absolutely no idea about the nuances, and they play a game and they find it offensive, that reflects badly on Atari, not the programmer who made it, because, well, this is an Atari game. It's playing on my Atari. And then we get the blame for something like that. So every company mm-hmm. is always going to protect that because we have to be able to, in the as best we can control what people perceive as your game, right? Your company representative. So that's always, it's always going to be a sticky situation for that. And that's for any company. It's not an Atari. Um, Atari yeah. seems to have, uh, the, the, the honorary sash of being the, uh, the destroyer of, of, of community when it comes to things like that. And it's, and we don't want to be that. But well, I think Nintendo's moments. the king of that, but uh... I know I think they've taken the crown. I think they've taken the crown. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we but you can be runner up. <laughs> but we see, we see and we acknowledge the absolute passion that people are making these games, and we want to be able to give a platform for these creations. But we just can't copy yeah. any IP, whether it's an Atari or that. Now, you know, and and that's where it's, sometimes it gets uh, difficult. You know, we have <laughs> we have some plans for Bob. You know, but some of the games that he made yeah. were Atari titles. We have to kind of, we have to figure out ways around around certain things because it was made in the past without permission. But we can't just yeah. we can't just give a, a free pass. We have to do some things around there because also the lawyers don't necessarily uh, follow our good intention ways, right? They have to follow the law right. because they're lawyers, and there are certain rules and all yeah. that. But we're figuring these things out, and we're going to navigate uh, through all of that. And if someone has a proposal, please don't just make a full game of you know. It's like okay, uh, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna make a spiritual successor of Yar's Revenge, all right? And I'm gonna make the game. And here, right. Atari, here's my game. That gives us no way to respond outside of you can't do that. <laughs> Right. We can see yeah, how good it is. We can see that. But you got to pitch it. All right. And, yeah, and I, it's, it's I know the it's sticky tough. situation of like they want to work with you. But as soon yeah. as they tell you about their game, yeah, you're all over it. You're you're very aware of it at yeah. that position. And, and you'll probably be actively watching. Yeah. What I, happens in the future with that game? Yeah. And we have to be as 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 stewards yeah. of our own. IPs and 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 our and our brand name. I hate saying brand name, but it's true. You know, it's yeah. our name. It's our it's our reputation. We have to be able to protect that and have a certain amount of control over that. You know, there's a lot of ways to to, to have a, a spiritual successor to to create a fantastic game that you don't need to copy an existing IP directly. You know, there's there's so many ways to do that. And, you know, and if I can be a, a voice, boy, you know, if someone wants to send me information about I've got this game, but I kind of you based off this, I'm happy to help you try to figure out a way around. Yeah. How can you make it unique? How can you make it you? Uh, because yeah. it also Luck, just, luckily game mechanics aren't copyrightable to an extent. Right. 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 right? Um, yeah. Assets are, but game mechanics. So right. luckily, you know, adventure wasn't. You know, the game mechanics of Adventure weren't copyrighted, and we have plethora of RPGs now. And and, and <laughs> right? John's and John's uh, 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 I want to say caverns again. Catacombs of Chaos uh, is a good yeah. example of that. It's adventure like, yeah. but it's not adventure. Yeah. So you know, there's definitely creative ways. And I just challenge anyone: the, you have so much creativity to create the game to begin with. You have the creativity to make the differences to make it your own thing. But I, I get it. As a fan, you're like, this is what I always wanted Game X to be like. <laughs> I get that. Right. I get that so much. It's just illegal. <laughs> yeah. So, so you're, you're of two minds. There's the lawyer side, and then there's your side where it's like you want to encourage them. You want to make it work. And Absolutely. you'll do what you can within the framework mm-hmm. of the legality of things. Yeah. And, you know, and, and that's also where a great place for the forums is. You know, I know there's the thrill of you created a game, it gets put into a physical cartridge, right? But, yeah. you know, that, that's just that's inviting a lawsuit to come at you or a and d right? Uh, but, you know, that's yeah. where the forums and being able to pass, uh, you know, uh, uh, my creation and pass it along for anyone to try 
and we've got like things like the Harmony card or the twenty uh, the twenty six hundred Uno cards that you can do yeah. those kind of things. You know, it's just when you start yeah. to you know sell it and profit from it, that's where okay. all that's the, when all the lawyers the, perk up. That's yeah. That's when the, the when the dogs of wars ha, war has been re, uh, released. <laughs> right. But we're not trying to uh, you know, we're not trying to stop anyone from making a creation. Uh, you know, if you yeah. if you got something you want to make, make it. But you know, understand that it may have to stay in a. I'm passing along in the forum and throw it on your harmony cards. Versus, we're okay. going to put this on a place where it can be sold. There's a big difference there. That that seems like a, a very reasonable compromise. Like. Just don't make money on it. Just yeah, you can make it, but just don't make money on yeah. it uh, until if you want to legitimize it, come to Atari, go to whoever, but mm -hmm. just keep it as a hobby. But if you turn it into a business, that's when that's when it gets ugly. You start yeah. getting attention. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a question from Andy Man One. All right, Andy Man. Uh, why is uh, why is Atari so ignorant towards all Atari users outside of the United States? There's not... a huge fan community in Europe and other continents which currently have absolutely no chance to buy the current and upcoming physical product legally. Yep. With this, you push many uh, people on the Atari community uh, in front on the head, uh, in front of the head. I'm not sure what that means. Yeah, um, on a personal note, okay. um, I had to order my Atari VCS mm -hmm. through my P.O. box in Washington in the US. Oh, you're, you're in Canada. Uh, and, yeah, I'm in Canada oh. and I had to cross the Canadian border to pick it up because there is literally no shipping option yeah. to Canada. Yeah. I know. Um, so I imported it. Luckily, I didn't get charge duty, which was very nice of the Lucky border guard. Um, but uh, in the chat, yep. somebody said, oh, we have to buy it off of eBay through I know. somebody else. And there's so it sucks. Is there is there some work towards that? Because obviously you have fans outside of the yeah. U.S. Yeah. I, is it a is it a slow rollout that's happening right now? Right. Uh, so we are not ignorant of people outside of the U.S. I mean, that's a, that's a no that's a, <laughs> that's a no dog uh, response there. Number uh, one, number one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're going to be making some announcements soon that will be that you will see uh, international uh, stuff uh, happening. All right. In terms of the VCS, unfortunately, the way the previous regime, yeah, why am I saying regime? The previous, <laughs> I mean, it's a good enough. You know, there were, you know, the, the CEO, yeah. uh, Fred Chenez and uh, Michael Arts, uh, you know, when they created for the Indiegogo, they used the Indiegogo. Uh, th there's something about, I don't know specifically the, the laws and all that, but there's, a, there's basically a loophole about when you have a Kickstarter uh, campaign that you can ship uh, international without a lot of the certifications and things like that. Um, there's okay. just, there was a lot of things done with the VCS that painted it in the corner that couldn't, uh, now it can't get out of the U.S. right now. Um, oh, okay. So our hands have been tied in that regard, and it really sucks. Um, but mm -hmm. future stuff, and again, more things are going to be announced, that is not going to be an issue anymore. So no, I, 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 I wish I can say, hey, tomorrow the VCS is going to be ship, shipping international. But it's it. There's a little bit of hand uh, hands being tied on that over a couple issues of way the the VCS can. You know, it's it's certified and all that, but it's like the packaging mm. in multiple languages and stuff like that. Yeah, and, you have to um, have French in Canada. You know, yeah. in Europe, you have to have you know whatever right. Dutch. And, and none of that was uh, set up properly. And so we have all yeah. these units that can't go anywhere except for the U.S. And mm. until recently, you know, th there hasn't been a lot of positive moment momentum from a community to say this is this is worth it. And we have been showing that there is interest in the VCS, you know, but it's still it's a lot of money and man hours to fix this mistake. And yeah, again, Atari is a. a a small company with a gigantic name. So we have to be yeah. very picky and choosy about what we spend money on projects on and, uh, you know, and why spending. Otherwise, we go bankrupt and you're, you know, we're back to square one about here's a new company and they don't give a damn about anything. Right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I the, wish I had a better answer for the VCS, but the future is going to be it's being worked or, on. It's being worked on and, and future products and future stuff is going to be worldwide distribution. I don't have any details beyond that, that we're not ignoring the world. Okay, that's good. Um, yeah, I was looking at the pricing on like the homebrew 2600, 1700 okay. games, yep. um, and they vary from game to game. 
you know, it, I'm going to quote Canadian dollars because okay. that's all I have. Um, $5.39 for Dion's. I'm sure it works out to a very nice number uh, in three, the U.S. Three, $3.99 uh, U.S. There, I knew it. Oh, yeah. okay. And six eighty nine for Bob's 7800 game, nine ninety nine for John Ran Van Rysen's mm -hmm. uh, Alien Abduction. Are these, they, they seem random. Um, are these prices negotiated between Atari and the developer, or is that something you can I talk asked them. about? I asked them. What do you want to yeah. price okay. this at? I mean, I give some guidance. You know, we 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 have an unofficial kind of tier ballpark range. You know, twenty six hundred. You know, I kind of look at a console. Um, you know, a generation, you know, how much is the system being taxed, right, kind of thing, you know, and Atari 2600 being a second generation, you know, is going to be a quote unquote lower tier in terms of pricing compared to something that might be like a Jaguar or certainly more a modern uh, Atari game, you know, where the system is being utilized to its fullest capacity. Um, you know, so there's kind of a guideline and, you know, and the guideline for 2600 yeah. is like, you know, Two ninety nine ish, you know, the four ninety nine. Now, in the case of yep. uh, John Van Ryzen's, uh, you know, hero, uh, um, uh, alien abduction, <laughs> hero right? sequel, the, the hero sequel, <laughs> yeah. right, the the spiritual successor of he hero. Yeah, that was a slightly different uh, set of circumstances. First of all, it's it's John, and this is his first game in yeah. in, in many many years, and it's a sequel decades. to it, yeah. it, decades, and it's a sequel to Hero. So. And yeah. the length of gameplay that it has with the 20 plus levels on it, I think it's tw 20 levels or 25. I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But yeah. also the depth of gameplay also you know, said, right. okay, this is worth a little bit more versus a more simple, right. you know, one screen kind of shooter, maybe potentially that might be a little bit lower in terms of a price. But it's a, it's a okay. guesstimate at best. And, and it's what, the, uh, what right. the developers feel comfortable with. Um, I'm okay. not. That, that's great. That's actually the. A, a good thing because then the developer can work with you yeah. and figure out a price point. Yeah. You know, you put it too high, you're going to get a couple sales. You right. put it too low, you're not going to make enough money to make it worthwhile. So yeah. and it's, we, it's great that there's, there's flexibility there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we try to find that sweet spot, you know, talk and then, again, part of that collaboration that they want to have is like, okay, you've got multiple screens, you got multiple this and all that. And you know, it's like, oh, well, what do you think about that? Do you think that's fair? And most of the time yeah. it's been, you know, so far it's been like, oh yeah, it's more than fair. It's like, all right, then let's go with that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. you know, is is there an exact science and algorithm uh, on it? No, it's it's a gut it's a gut yeah. feeling, and we go for it. <laughs> yeah. Andrew Davy, some more hard questions coming up. Okay. Don't worry. <laughs> um, uh, Atari will release Mr. Run and Jump on Cart in yes. three days. Well, um, but it's the, not available the on the Atari the pre PCS store. Pre-orders. Pre -order, sorry, yeah, yeah. the pre-order. It'll be on sale in yeah. three days uh, for pre-orders. Um, but it's not going to be in the Atari VCS store as far as I know right now. Not right now, no. Um, but, and you've also released Alien Abduction, John mm -hmm. Van Ryzen's mm -hmm. game, um, on the Atari VCS, but it's but not, not in physical. cart form. Yes. Um, are there plans in the future to have simultaneous or staggered release for digital and cart and or and oh. or was Mr. Run and Jump an experiment to see what the reception would be like for a new game on cart? Um, a little bit of yes, and uh, uh, focusing on on twenty six hundred. I, I I'm not a hundred percent part of the team that does the physical cards. I'm 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 involved, but not every nuance of of the thing. Uh, so there's a little bit yeah. of experiment on there. Um, you know, to to see the reception on there. Uh, there's also just it. I don't want to say the novelty. It's like, I mean, because Mr. Run and Jump, that's how it started out as a 2600 game. So the plan to make these carts, you know, once we got through the Atari 50 and the and the three prototype release uh, XP cart games, you know, that was, you know, we had yeah. a lot of positive reception on there. So, oh, okay, let's make, uh, you know, Mr. Run and Jump as part of this uh, launch with this more modern game, um, which is, you know, a hell of a lot of fun. You know, in terms of the 2600 ROM being on the BCS, we don't have anything concrete of when we're going to do that. I think what we're, you know, the, the general consensus is let the physical be a phys be physical right now, and then later on we'll, you know, let let the physical be special, and then, uh, you know, and at some point bring that on. It. I don't have an ETA. I don't know if that's, you know, six months from now or a year from now, but that's the general. Okay. Let the physical be physical. And, you know, and then we have the modern game remake, which has a little first cameo of the 2600 gameplay. So, 
Nice. <laughs> Welcome, British IBM, with your um, people bringing them over. Thanks oh, for raiding. Raid. Now, raid. now is when we dance. <laughs> Yes, that's right. <laughs> Everybody dance. Um, yeah, because um, it's it's very interesting. You have physical cartridges. Yeah. Um, obviously, that's a very exciting thing for this community yeah. because that keeps that thread alive. That's, from that's our the, DNA. Uh, yeah, it's 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 physical. People love. Yeah. Physical, physical things i've got way too many cartridges in boxes above yeah. me so i think that's uh that is very interesting for this and, community and and john's uh, and john's game uh, alien abduction will become a physical cart we 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 just oh, have great. a lot of schedule that's good. we have a lot of scheduling things and we've got to talk to john in more detail about it but our intention is to make it physical i know john wants to make it physical so we just got to get we got to we got to do some th a couple things lined up. But yes, there is there is the plan to make it uh, digital without any concrete plans to say it's coming out on this date. Great. So okay. yes, and it, and to follow that up, um, <laughs> speaking of Mr. Run and Jump, we're going to be having John Mikula oh, on awesome. the show on Tuesday, the nice developer guy. of Mr. Run and Jump. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Yeah, so. So we'll be finding out more about that game and the development of that. So, yeah, he seems like a very, very nice guy. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to talking with him on Tuesday. So, you know, tune in on Tuesday for that. Yeah. We're, we're, uh, we're looking to buck the trend of no physical. Uh, we think physical media and mm -hmm. in terms of preservation is important. Uh, and we want to do more in terms of physical media. Uh, what that means in the in the long term, like, you know, taking something like a... Uh, centipede recharge and all that we don't know yet i've i've thrown out some ideas that were been 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 kind of radical and people said hmm uh but nothing in concrete to say yeah let's do that but we have a great admiration for physical uh media and you know the core of atari doesn't really like this trend of all digital now the vcs obviously is all digital but Neither now <laughs> we've made partnership with uh you know um uh uh playmaji uh, for the yes, you know, for the remix for the poly, uh, poly mega remix. So yeah, that was one of my questions in future. We might as well jump to that. Uh, yeah, poly mega. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Uh, poly mega. Uh, yeah. Play Magic is putting out an add-on for their poly mega that yeah. will support the twenty six hundred and seventy eight hundred. Yeah, isn't it cool? Cartridges. Yeah, it is. That's I, cool. I have questions you probably can't answer about that. Uh, um, I, whether it's it, because there's not a lot of details. Right. So, yeah, it's very, yeah. very early. They have yeah. a lot to do that they've already um, are working on before mm -hmm. that comes out. Um, I my my number one question is: Is it just a basic cart dumper, and then it's uh, emulated on the system, or do, will it work with ARM modern ARM cartridges mm -hmm. that keep talking to the cartridge and need to keep the cartridge active because it will just block out a whole bunch of modern homebrew. Right. 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 If it if it's just a cartridge jumper, mm -hmm. dumper like the Retron 77, it will be yeah. very almost useless right. to the homebrew community if it's just a cartridge dumper. Uh, again, it's very early, so I don't know any details, and I don't think Play, uh, uh, play Maji. Am I playing? Am I saying that Play Maji? Am I saying that right? I I I, I looked on where somebody's saying it, like yeah. them saying it, but it's Play Maji. Play, play Maji. I'm just saying. I'm just gonna okay. say Poly Mega. So it's just people. Please yeah. know, I'm not ignorant of the company. I'm just going to say Polymega because I can pronounce that. Uh, yeah. um, it's still so early that we don't, we haven't really yeah. talked in full details of what is going to do. But from my speculation of what I think is going to be, it's going to be at least in this iteration, in the beginning iteration, it's going to be just like the Polymega, where it is a ROM dumper. Um, now they what what we were we were making something similar. We were in the uh, in the process of making something similar to uh, the, the the remix, right? Um, yeah. But what Polymega has in leaps and bounds is that software side and the emulation. You know that it, we're mm -hmm. still a few. We would be still a few years away. So it made sense on a couple senses because a they're ahead of the game. So let's partner with them. You know to do that, and also it's yeah. a small niche com uh, community. Why are we going to do two competing products that are going to do similar things? No one wins on that. So Polymega wins because they can sell their hardware and their services. The VCS wins because now we've expanded the type of games, PlayStation, Sega Saturn, 
you know, N64 if you get the you know modules for that. You know, yeah. so everyone wins, and it's like, why are we going to try to fight each other on on something like that? You know, for a, a small uh, community base kind of uh, appeal. So yeah. the partnership uh, is a win win for both of them, so of both of us, right? So yeah. what ultimately it gets made, we're going to have to really talk about that and, and anything that we can do. Because the nice thing also is that the VCS spec wise is more powerful than what the Polymega is. So you have the remix, uh, you have okay. a Polymega that's actually more powerful than the Polymega. So, yeah, well, and I mean, I, I saw it in the forums and I saw it in the chat here. Hmm. That people talking about will there be an add-on for the Atari VCS for cartridges? I mean, that's ones being Polymega made for the Polymega. Gonna, yeah. yeah, that's what the remix. That's what it is. Be. That's what's going to be. Yeah. So you know, okay. in the future, you know what kind of collaborations are going to happen, you know, between uh, Polymega and Atari, you know, um, I'm speculating, I, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of ideas, right? <laughs> there's a lot of ideas going along about what the future is going to be. And certainly having a physical cartridge based system and, and all that is certainly on the table and something that is, that is of interest to in, you know, Obviously, there has to be, you know, you go through design processes and you have to go through practical prototypes and all that. Will something work mm -hmm. out? Will something not work out? That's going to be for the future. But, you know, right now we're dreaming big about what can we do? What is it? You know, for me, what I want to do is have something that's kind of like the Polymega that's built into one console where you can adapt the cartridge. And so you can play physically FPGA, uh, you know, and then you have another brain or another section that can play the modern games like the atari os you know the vcs can do now so that i always look at this as i just want to play a game whether it's physical and old or modern and new i want one system to play games mm -hmm. so one moment i'm plugging right. in my atari cartridge my adventure cartridge because of course it's adventure and i play that and then i i want to you know play the modern mr run and jump and i don't want to jump to another yeah. console where i'm doing that now with so many consoles because I think the number one question of people coming back to revisit the Atari from their childhood, they mm -hmm. go, they get, the, maybe they buy an old Atari 2600, mm -hmm. they go to hook it up to their TV and they go, I can't, I don't know how, and they right. jump in the forums, they jump on Facebook or wherever, yeah. Twitter, and they go, how do I connect my a 2600 it's, to my modern yeah. 4K TV? And yeah, you know, there needs to be these solutions yeah, that, that have HDMI out ready to go, whether it's a cartridge based or yeah. digital delivery like the Atari VCS. Yeah. So bridging that gap is an important right. thing. Right. And it's something that people need. Yeah. No, I mean that's that's certainly mm. my personal vision of of of, of a future. Uh, you know, w are we actively working on something like that right now? No. You know, but we're, mm -hmm. But we're not not working on it. I know I'm working on it in yeah. my, you know, I'm making designs, I'm doing this, but I got to convince people. But, you know, right now we're focusing on the VCS and, and what it can do and, and acting as that blueprint for what comes in the future. Um, and following up with this, Nathan yeah. Strom asked a question. There are plenty of hardware platforms out there that Atari is already publishing software for. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't Atari be better off focusing on software and moving away from their own dedicated hardware? Atari made at hardware back in the day because they had to in order to sell video games. This is no longer the case. And this is a great question because, mm -hmm. you know, given that Coleco and Intellivision brands both had spectacular yeah. failures in recent years trying yeah. to bring hardware to the market because it's, right. a, it's dominated by three massive, massive companies. Sure. You know, Nintendo, uh, Sony... And um, and uh, Microsoft, Sony, Microsoft. Microsoft. <laughs> like who? Yeah, and uh, yeah. So and that other, why that other company? That small company with huge <laughs> pockets. So the question is, why put out a piece of hardware? I kind of alluded to that in yeah. the last comment about it's bridging that gap. But from your perspective, like, why put out a piece of hardware? That's a huge gamble in a, in a market that people already have like three consoles already, and you're asking them to spend hundreds more on another one. Yeah. I, absolutely hard. <laughs> Atari shouldn't uh, do in a certain way. Atari shouldn't put out hardware. Uh, hardware <laughs> is a money sink. Uh, you know the yeah. the Microsoft and, and Sony uh, supplement their they lose money. You know for every console they sell, but they make it up in gangbusters from 
game selling. And that's why they're trying to get rid of physical yeah. because that's less cost on their physical uh, consoles and they digitalize everything and that's e easier distribution and that's just more profit for them on that. So you can see why they want to get rid of digital, but also people are, when they have the options between physical and, and digital, people are trending toward digital. So it's not all like Microsoft and Sonya, yeah. ooh, we get rid of it, all of it. It is being led <laughs> by the community and by the consumers that digital yep. makes more sense. There's by, been many generations yeah. of shared digital and physical, and people have been opting for digital. Me, I'm a physical right. media type of person, right. for better or for worse. And yeah. literally, the Atari VCS is my first digital, digital, all digital. only. Yeah, all digital. I was I was very hesitant because sure, you know I'm scared of. Well, there's a question later, but we'll get to that. You're scared um, of, the, of the future, but you know, in, in I'm terms scared of, of the future, yes, <laughs> in, in one way, of, yes. Yeah, but I mean, in terms of in terms of you know Atari going into the into the hardware business, yeah, it's kind of stupid uh, to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and a little bit of that was it was the VCS was inherited by the previous regime that they did that they created this. Which, you know, again, I don't right. know for certain, but it certainly seemed like they, they were considering it kind of a one and done and just enjoy it and do whatever you want with it. But since right. we have it, there's a lot of good to it. Um, and again, potential things that we could do in the future, there are things that we can do with hardware that other people aren't doing that I think could be a service, you know, to just games, you know, gameplay, preservation older games and just enjoying games. Um, so I think there's, there's a, there was a reason to stay in the, in the battle. And I've devoted myself to the VCS because I enjoy the platform and I think it needs a fair shot. And I think there's a lot of enjoyment in there. So, so I have but a question insane. from, yeah, it, it is, it's, it's a big, <laughs> a big gamble, but uh, it it's, I, I have to say the hardware is solid. I played with the controller, you know, the yeah. the upgrade to fix the bug that's still shipping six months later yeah. <laughs> after the, the, the console, uh, yeah. as it's been recognized. But anyway, it was yeah. very easy to flash um, the, the to update the, uh, the operating system. Um, you just stick it in. I mean, it's a barrier for people who don't know how to make I a, know. a thumb we, drive. We sent, I, um, sent out, I mail out yeah. uh, uh, pre-flash sticks to a lot of people. Uh, so Excellent. they they make a request, and we send them out as quickly as we can, and we get that in with instructions on how to do that. We're going. Th we're doing a big update that's going to update the Linux kernels, like even future, like not to current, but actually a generation ahead. And hopefully all of this flashing stuff and all that is going to be a thing in the past by the knock on wood at the end of the summer. So with a bunch yeah, of other yeah. features. But the, hard, the, the hardware is, is solid. Like it's, yeah. I've had no problem with the hardware itself. The, the controllers feel great. I've great. not heard any complaints, but software can be fixed. Software can make, be updated, which make is great. Sure, make sure you update your, uh, your fir the firmware on your controllers. Plug it in with the USB, go into settings, yep. and make sure you uh, update that. Because sometimes people have flakiness with their controllers, and the firmware wasn't uh, updated. So do that if you have some controller issues. But unless I you've did. got it already. You already did. Okay, good. Great. Yep, yep. So Andrew Davey, he's, he says he's leaving. Don't go, Andrew. Um, Andrew this your, here's your question. <laughs> hey Dave, I'm an OG Atari homebrew developer um, with some reputation oh, in the community. We've had a bad reputation. We don't know, but yeah, okay. <laughs> um, I, I would like to know your plans for engagement with the community. Uh -huh. um, I'm concerned that in this acquisition process, he's talking about all the IPs that you're, uh, he clarified later in the thread about okay. the IPs that you're ac acquiring, yeah. um, that you will alienate people like myself who, so I claim, to keep, keep the Atari name alive for the past 20 years. Um, the question is, what are you going to do to support our community as to oppose, opposed to profiting from it? So, like, mm -hmm. rather than just take games, are you embedding yourself in the community? Are you listening to the community? Are you responding to the community? What in community engagement do you have? Uh, I'm, I'm, I've put myself out there many months ago that anyone can contact me. Uh, you know, we are not looking to move in and interrupt anything the atari age community is the atari age community we're not going to do anything you know there's there seems to be this you know mccarthyan type fear that we're moving in to 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 swallow everything up 
uh, the community is the community, and we're not going to interfere with anything on there. Um, you guys, yeah. built, you know, and, and again, I've been part of the community silently, but I've been part of the community for, you know, since 2003-ish or somewhere around there. Um, yeah. You know, and we, we've always been there as, as Atari, you know, um, and, you know, some many people have chosen not to say anything because, you know, that's an instant target on your back. Uh, I'm dumb enough to put myself out in front. <laughs> um, yeah, you have a th you have a thread in the Atari Age forums mm -hmm. asking for feedback, good or bad. Yeah, yeah, yell at me. Yeah. Go ahead, feel free. Yeah. You know, uh, and I read everything <laughs> that gets sent to me. Um, you know, yeah. sometimes sometimes I roll my eyes a little bit, but you know, I do read <laughs> everything that someone sends me information on. Yeah. Sometimes I can't always respond, or you know, or my my response is very late, and I heavily apologize when it's heavily late um but yeah. i do read everything and listening to people is important um and we have we have zero intention of changing anything uh you know I, i'm not coming on here to say homebrewers put your stuff on the atari vcs now this is an open door to contact. This is the future. This, this is what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Screw your uh, your fifty two hundred and your twenty six hundred. Right? No, absolutely not. Uh, this is an open door uh, to say, hey, we want to we want to showcase your games. This is another avenue uh, to have your games enjoyed by other people. We're not looking to replace you know Al and making uh you know Atari cartridges and and things like that you know god forbid that you know what we, yeah. what we do advocate is you know please don't you know the whole IP issue and you know in the legal aspect illegal aspect um but yeah. you know we want to make we want to we want to give the community a big hug uh <laughs> <laughs> um, and a Andrew followed up with this. Uh, the implication there is you do have the ability to change things, and I I'm guessing he's asking for the, the positive side of things. What <laughs> what can you contribute? What can you do to boost up the community to contribute back with the sure. VCS? Support uh, them as yeah. m as much as humanly possible. You know, if, if like taken uh you know taken john and i mean john has his own platform right uh uh um, john hancock right uh, yeah you know yeah he has his own platform and he has his following so you know yeah. I, it's yeah. you know he has a big speaker yeah. yeah so i don't need to sit there and say you know oh we're going to support you by using our social media he, he'll probably he can probably outpace us on that right at this point in time but you know just yeah. using our social media to uh, present uh these games to a larger community uh, and to, you know, to get more eyeballs on there and just being a partner in there, uh, you know, for, uh, this hasn't been answered, but, or asked, uh, you know, revenue split is 80, 20. Um, so, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, that's, and, that's and we get the 20, not, not the other way around. Someone, <laughs> asked, someone, someone that's actually good. asked that. That's good. You clarified. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Someone asked great. me that. It says 80, 20 and says, wow, why are you taking 80%? I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so, so, that would be, 20. uh, brutal. <laughs> yeah, that would be brutal. Um, which you know, mm -hmm. in distribution, you know, in in, in the in the revenue sharing uh, department, where that's the best in the industry. Normally, it's like uh, yeah. you know seventy thirty or sixty forty. Yeah. Um, so yeah. you know, and and what I always say to developers, whether it's homebrew or someone else, you know, there's a few people, small developers who you know jumped on with the VCS, you know, got really involved, has been part of the community. Uh, Metgan Gaming and a few other people uh, that are coming up, Kraz Productions, um, you know, they're very Atari-centric, and they only have plans to be on the VCS as, you know, VCS exclusives. And I tell them, don't. If you want to be an exclusive on the VCS, be a timed exclusive. Be six months. That's right. that's the minimum we ask for exclusivity if you say, oh, uh, you know, we're going to be exclusive on the VCS to say at least six months. And I encourage people right. to then... Use us. Use us to say, use our social media posts. Uh, you know, get feedback from the community. Develop your game further, and then jump into the larger, more profitable world of the Switch and the and Steam and whatever. Because what the problem is is that those games get lost in the avalanche of games that. Right. Not really good anymore from coming from uh, from Nintendo. It's it's there's a lot of shovelware out there. So making your yeah. game stand out has been really hard. So we're, you know, in, in the best way we can is try to 
be a, 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 a platform, the megaphone to say, hey, this game is out here and here's some reviews and here's things you can look up and, and, and show some gameplay. And hopefully more reviewers can then take the VCS seriously to say, oh, we're going to look at this game because this is the first time showing up on the VCS. And then when you go to a Switch or a Steam, you have something to fall back on that there's something searchable. You're not an unknown name per se, right? As, as much as we can give you a leg up. And that's how we're looking and, to support. And, and to follow up with that, there's the massive strikes in um, the film industry right now mm -hmm. with the writers and the actors. And one of their um, complaints, one of their um, contract issues is with transparency with streaming platforms. Mm. They have no feedback on how many times their their movies have been sold, right, right, streamed. Right. Absolutely, it's it's a yeah. brick wall. They have yeah. no idea, and I'm I'm part of that. I'm a filmmaker. Okay. I have a, a film on Amazon Prime. I have oh. no idea okay. how many times it's been streamed on there. It's just like I don't know. And they could be. It could be streamed a million times. It could be streamed sure. once. We what, we give we, you... we give monthly reports. We pay every month. That may change to uh, to quarterly, just because it's a lot of work yeah. for our accounting department. As I've now added a lot of developers and a lot more games over the last six months, <laughs> so they're yeah. like, uh, "Can you give us a break and maybe go to a more conventional quarterly?" But as of this moment, <laughs> yeah, as of this moment. Uh, we pay monthly, and we report, and we give reports of what has been sold and and, and all that. That's um, great. So that's great. That's how it is at this moment. Maybe go. May it may go Excellent. to quarterly. Give our accountants a that's break. That's probably more reasonable. It's probably a little more <laughs> it's, reasonable. It's a. It's. Yeah. Um, um, so as a follow up question about licensing and IP, yeah. the community would definitely want me to ask this question. Okay. Okay. Um, they Lay did not up. pose this, but I know they want this question. Um, Almost a hundred titles recently left the Atari Age store, mm -hmm. um, as they're all like, unlicensed. Ah, uh, as they're all unlicensed ports of games. Right. Um, as the list of titles being removed um, were released, they, he put it because they went on sale. Um, right. A number of people independently contacted me, noticing that the only ports left in the Atari Age store were Atari-owned titles. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm wondering if there's, I mean, you've touched on this before, if there's a more relaxed approach that Atari is taking to fan-made ports of Atari titles, mm -hmm. or as, as some people have been theorizing, might be hinting at something coming in the future, some cooperation between Atari Age and Atari. By your uh, reaction, I am guessing you have no idea that there are lots of Atari ports on the Atari Age store. Oh, stuff. I know, I know. There's a lots of a lot of Atari ports. I, I don't know specific. I haven't been, I haven't been in the in the store to look. You know, I'm not counting every single game and seeing what's on it. So I don't know what has remained or, or why they remained. You know, we we're we're not yeah. control. We're, we don't control Atari Age. Uh, you know, if there's yeah, because people are theorizing about because uh -huh. of that, right? That Atari is buying Atari Age or <laughs> there's some licensing agreement with uh, Atari Age or something right, like right. that. Uh, I don't know anything specific on there. I know we've been we've been uh, talking to various people at, at, you know, I'm talking to various people at Atari Age, you know, to collaborate with and, and all that and to work with. Yeah. So, you know, anything specific, you know, and when it comes to like, IP acquisitions and all like you know let's take for instance let's just focus on the on the uh, the stern the you know the uh, berserk and frenzy yeah. and all the other things on there uh, a lot of that yeah. is kept close to the chest to the people who are involved uh, if, right. if, if I was told correctly that was a passion project of, of Wade Rosen that he loved uh, you know he loves berserk and like practically one of the first things he did is like, let's go after that let's see if they want to do something with that and a lot of yeah. those things are not even within Atari is not spread around because negotiations are critical things you know what the last thing you want yep. is, yeah information to get out there to then circle around and then someone makes a comment and says that game sucks and then it gets back and it says yeah. well you one of your employees said this game sucks you know and then everything yeah. gets scuttled <laughs> right so you know. Yeah, and you and you can't announce things before they happen. Right. There's NDAs, there's negotiations. Yeah. So even if something was, I knew this question would be a pointless question almost to ask, right. because things that are happening in the future are, in the are not able to be talked about. Yeah, in the works. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in, in taking the Berserk uh, thing, uh, for example, I knew I learned about it like 12 hours before anyone else did. 
right? So for me, it was a surprise as everyone else. And when they made the announcement, I was like, you know, I was like, I was just, you know, I was like, oh, really? That's awesome. Great. Cheers. You yeah. know, <laughs> that's right. So, yeah, yeah. you know, in terms of, you know, any like acquisitions and things like that, that kind of knowledge is not spread throughout Atari, you know, because of the delicate nature yeah. of any negotiation. And I think that's pretty commonplace for most uh, for most companies. Smart companies will keep these things under wrap um, because once things leak yeah. out, it's a great way to scuttle any deal. So yeah, it's very, so true. You have yeah. to be prepared to announce it with all the details mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at the right time. Everybody's on the same page. You can't just yeah. leak something like yeah. that. So. And if I didn't ask it, yeah, they yeah, would no, be like, "Why didn't fine. you ask that?" So, yeah, and, you know. and and I, and, you know, and I'm happy to answer in a non-answer way, you know, from what I know. <laughs> so, you know, it, yeah. it's the best I can do, and, and you know, in, in full transparency on that. And you know, and I know people have asked in the past, like, what are all the IPs that uh, that have been, yes. you know, uh, things like that. And that's more of a difficult question because a lot of times the IPs are not some of some you know titles are like only for like this version, like a DOS version, but yes. not modern versions. And so there's yeah. still, you know, there's still this, there's always this little, still little bit of uh, negotiating going on and still uh, collating all that information properly. Because again, what we don't want to do is improperly say, we now own Game X and we don't own the full Game X and then we have egg on our face and, you know, yeah. disrupt anything like that. Because you, you could own it for, you know, digital but mm -hmm. not cartridge right. or a t arcade, but you or know, not yeah. this or yeah. Yeah. But um, like, so I guess the best idea is to go to Atari and say, do you own this? Yeah, IP? And, and, I guess? And, and they will, and they will. And unfortunately the best thing I can say is when that, all that information is collated and properly processed, mm -hmm. that's when they'll start making announcements about specific IPs, but it doesn't hurt to yeah. send out an email to, to ask us, do you own this? And hopefully someone yeah, gets back. Because, it, because when all the ports uh, were removed from the Atari Age store, that's when people were starting to go, okay, maybe I can negotiate with whoever owns the IP to make mine legitimate because there have been some yeah. um, cooperations in terms of like, say, sure. Load go. Runner just came out for the Atari 2600. Mm -hmm. Boulder Dash is another example yeah. um, of a licensed game. So um, if you can, yeah, they're, if you they're looking get permission to get these IP licensed. owners. Uh, and, and, you know, yeah. and, and obviously have the proof, not just, you know, well, he said I could, uh, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> writing, Get yeah, it in that writing. opens up everything, you know, because we don't we don't want to. It's like I always use this analogy when it comes to IP. I'm sitting there looking out the, you know, my window in my backyard and I see my neighbor grilling on my grill and I go out there and I say, hey, what the hell are you doing? And he says, well, you weren't using it. So I decided to grill on your grill. And I said, well, but that's my grill. Right. We don't want to do that yeah. to anyone else. We don't want to go on someone else's grill uh, because that's just not that, – that's just ain't right, right? But if you can yeah. talk yeah. to someone who owns that IP to say, I've made this game, you want to spend – and get the okay for that, then we're happy to just say, hey, let's bring that on the VCS. Yeah. Uh, Nathan Strom has a question. How long of a retail life do you expect the Atari VCS to have before the hardware is obsolete? Will there be a follow-up? How long does Atari plan to support the back end of it? Online store, tech support, software updates. And my comments uh, to that is, to be honest, I already said, the VCS is the first non-physical media yeah, console yeah. I've ever bought. Right. Um, and I have the same ap apprehension. Sure. Um, I can still plug Atari's launch title of combat mm -hmm. into a from 1977 into Absolutely. my 2600, and it'll play 46 years later. Yep. So do you have some sort of contingency plan if the server shut down to be able to continue to enjoy the titles mm -hmm. uh, that we buy in the Atari VCS. Like if I am, if I take off, I haven't tried this and I should have, but if I remove the um, Wi-Fi yep. or the network cable from the Atari VCS, it will work. can I play all my titles? Yep. Yeah. Yep. No, obviously yeah. things like leaderboards, you know, the tie into leaderboards aren't going to function because it needs that inter information on there. But, to get, but the games themselves will play um, unless, yeah. you know, we, uh, there was a recent, uh, game from uh, a great company, uh, Alan, Wa Alan dash one, uh, they're very big in their Tron references. Um, they, uh, they put out a game, it's called Avian Knights and it's a multiplayer online, uh, you know, joust like type of, uh, competition and they're big and they have plans on all, you know, they have their own esports app and, and leaderboards. 
and and they're going to do a yearly competition on these games. Um, so though that that's definitely a game that is more tied to the internet, just because of the nature of the game. But like you know, you right. take Black Widow Recharged or you know any of the other games, you'll pl- you can play it all offline. But again, like some of the functions, like the leaderboards, are not going to update. Oh, Basic course. gameplay, you, you'll be able to play. Uh, but yeah, multiplayer know. games are just going to go away, of course. Um, oh, also. Um, mm-hmm. Does the login, when you log in at the title screen, connect to the servers, or can you log in without this, without you, the VCS You can log in with, without it. Again, some of those, like if you get notifications okay, from a friend or something like that, doesn't oh, happen, then it, you don't get those updates. But yes, you can be log yeah. in offline and be offline. Yeah. And can you back up the data on the VCS and restore it fully if- and have your whole... If you, infrastructure yes, story. you can, in your settings and storage, you can create, like, you take a, you take a, a USB 3, uh, you can do a USB 2, but the transfer rate would be uh, horrendous. <laughs> but you take a, uh, just a flash drive and plug it in and format it to the, to the Linux, uh, to a Linux Debian uh, based uh, operating system. And you can do that formatting within the Atari VCS, right? So it's, Excellent. it's VCS formatted, right? Um, you can transfer all your games to there. Now, what is not savable at this moment are all the save files, like your high scores or your progress on there. Okay. That's right now. That now is currently locked onto the internal drive on there. Uh, we're looking to okay. to change that with the big update, so you'll be able to back up those games. But you know, those drives will then be encrypted, so they can only play on the VCS. But they, you can back them up. I, I know for me personally. I use the uh, the internal drive as just the operating system, right? And I right. installed, yep. um, it, this is a little overkill, but it's actually starting to become not overkill. I put in a 500, uh, 512 uh, megabyte uh, uh, M.2, and all my games live off of that. Okay. And, Great. Yeah, and I also i have used external drives and flash drives. Uh, I run a different uh, Atari OS on a flash drive and, and run on that. I've done Bado Sarah off of a USB and played it off the VCS with practically no issues. The load times on Bado Sarah loading the games is like 10 seconds longer. But once it plays, it plays. So, yes, you can that's, back up that's the That's awesome. That, that, that covers everything then. You can just wipe it clean, load everything back up yeah. offline. Yeah. That covers the backup. So yeah. that's excellent. You know, now, th- um, in terms of the question yep. for the future proofing on that, I mean, that's a hard thing to say. We're, we're keeping the lights yeah. on until we, can, until we run out of money, you know, and hopefully we never run yeah. out of money. So, I mean, uh, the, the, our intention is to keep supporting the VCS. And in terms of the, the, the length of hardware, the lifespan of the hardware, hardware is a tough mm. thing. You know, hardware goes obsolete. But, again, the focus of what the games we're trying to – that we want to cater to – this the hardware has many, many years of life on there, you know. Um, yeah. So, you know, foreseeable future, three, four years. I, I mean, it's, it's an impossible thing to answer, but we have no intention of, hey, next week, everything's shutting down, you know. Yeah. That's, that's I'm, I'm guessing it's, it's based on the games people start submitting to you that might start pushing the limits. But what it can yeah. play now is what it can play in the future, the same type yeah. of games. Yeah. Uh, great example, BPM Boy. All right. First of all, if if you have a VCS yep. and you didn't buy BPM Boy from Retro Ninja, aka Tony Barnes, wh- what the hell's yep. wrong with you, right? <laughs> I'll check it out. Yeah, yeah, but that game runs great on the VCS, and mm-hmm. he's planning on putting it on on the on the Nintendo Switch, for example. And it, he's like, "Man, I got to dumb this thing down for the Switch." Right. So, you know, oh, while while wow. the, while the bar of technical <laughs> aspects of the switch is not exactly high, the switch is yeah. not the switch has a lot of capability and a lot of great gameplay. But the VCS yeah. the way a lot of the architecture is it's more powerful than the than the than the switch. So BPM Boy is a great example of great gameplay, 3D gameplay uh, and yeah. running great on the system. You know, so. <laughs> You know, who's calling <laughs> Who calls you through in, in an interview? Oh, my goodness. Um, and for my uh, last question, yes. unless it, anybody has any questions in the, in the chat, type them now. Um, Nathan Strum and Mr. Zarnwoop ask, will Atari have a presence at Portland Retro Gaming Expo? I think so. Or other gaming events? If yes. not, why not? I believe they're starting to 
they're starting to do more events and go. And, and why not in the past? It, simply money at the time, right? Uh, you know, yeah, again, as yeah. a startup, you know, kind of as a startup company and really getting, you know, the development of games on there, all the money has been going into games, right? Uh, and so it's it's taken some time to be fiscally responsible to say, okay, you know, we got to get our, we got to get some things in order, put out some games, let people know that we are back as a gaming company and, you know, get some of those financials coming in and now being able to come out and say, you know, we're not, you know, we've got the recharge title, which is a great uh, revisiting of, of our classic IPs. But now we have new IPs, yep. Combinera, um, you know, Mr. Run and Jump, other things coming into the future, too, uh, you know, that's coming along. So now is the time where it's like, OK, we can, you know, fiscally responsibly go out and do these things. And, and we, we've seen the lessons of non-fiscal responsibility from other uh, gaming companies. Uh, there's unfortunately a lot of examples of when you're not being fiscal responsible. So it's yeah. the second. So uh, I believe they're going to Portland. I'm not 100% sure. Great. I'm not going. I'll be so there. I, oh, damn it. I, I was going to come say hi to you. I want to I yeah. want to go. Maybe I'll sneak out there. I don't know, but uh, it will be it's, on my It's huge. Yeah, if it you, might be on my own dime. Have you to it before? What's that? Yeah. Have, have you been to Portland Retro Gaming Portland, Expo before? Portland is the one city in, in the continental United States that I have never been in. Oregon is the one state that I have not okay. set foot in. Well, um, now's your chance. It's huge. I know. It's huge. The, I don't know what expo, it is. The, it's huge. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what it is that I've my whole life I've avoided Portland, not by purpose, but just by circumstance. I like to consider that I've been kicked out of every decent city in this country. <laughs> Portland has not been go. given the opportunity of kicking me out yet. So yeah. you, can ch you can go there and check that one off the list. <laughs> one last question from uh, Halloween Jack. Yeah. Uh, will Atari be approaching some of their old programmers, uh, Dave Thur, to generate new arcade classics? That's a great question. Like the people who worked at Atari before, or mm -hmm. even Activision, or any of the other uh, Magic, um, to reinvigorate some of their old classics and reimagine them. Trying. We're trying. I trying. Mean, yeah, I mean, there's... Uh, John Van Ryzen is there. John, John's there. Um, I mean, I have been in contact with uh, Gary Kitchen. I haven't talked to David Crane, but uh, we're looking to, you know, do, do something mm -hmm. with their games coming out. Uh, nothing nothing has been yeah. in concrete, but I had a great conversation with Gary. Um, he's kind of ghosted me a little bit at this moment. Uh, I sent him a VCS loaded with all uh, the new Atari games and the and the and 2600 homebrews at the time. Or not the homebrews, but anything that was an official yeah. Atari title I sent to him. And he hasn't gotten back yeah. to me. I'm feeling I'm feeling a little I'm feeling <laughs> oh, a little no. feeling a little ghosted there, but uh, you know, oh, no. maybe he's trying, still playing them. He's enjoying it. I, I that, that's <laughs> the, that's the thing. It's like it's either like he's enamored by the VCS and he's playing it nonstop <laughs> and he hasn't got me, or he hates it and he doesn't want to talk to me. So I'm I'm hoping it's the it's the other one. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're yeah. trying to do that. I think there was something uh, with um, uh, 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 not Warren Robinette. Um, uh, I'm blanking. Uh, you're gonna crucify me for blanking that's on okay. the. On, um, I'm terrible with names. I won't crucify you. Yars I'm the Revenge, worst. Uh, e. um, uh, why, oh, oh, oh. Why God. am I blanking his name? You know who we're okay, talking chat, about. Okay, chat. Come to the rest. I do. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I, channel, oh, I Howard Scott Warshaw, HSW. As soon as somebody yes, put the uh, I can't initials. I, yeah. I can't believe I brain farted that one. Uh, there was talk that he was uh, going to be uh, doing something new... with Atari on a, se on a sequel, but I don't know any details if yes. that's gone through. That's right. The, or the, the Yars them. Revenge sequel. Yeah. yeah. I don't know any details. I just know that there was a point where he was talking with the games department, yeah. but where that is or, or is it in process, I don't know. Unfortunately, you know. Get on it. He's he's very prolific on uh, yeah. social media. Very yeah. prolific. I'm a, yeah. I'm a big Yars Revenge, but I play Yars Revenge until someone tells me to stop playing because I all <laughs> nine yes. lies, pink shield. I flipped in the I played one game where I sat all day and I flipped the numbers twice. And I had nine lives. Still. Oh my god! Wow. And my wife said, "Yeah, it's a yeah. classic game." Yeah, my wife said, "Get off the computer now, <laughs> or I will leave you." And I said, "Okay, I'm 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 good." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ultimatum. Yeah. So, if people want to get in touch with you, if okay. they want to, you got a question? I got, I got, oh, well, oh, I wanted this. to make give room for the community because I'm the kind of ignorant like <laughs> millennial who's just sitting here, right? Had, and I think I was had your chance. 
<laughs> it's right. It's over. over. It's, like, it's oh, over, no. man. I, I was one thing I'm really fascinated with yeah. is you. You it seems like you're. It's a two way street. You're sort of curating these mm-hmm. these titles in this homebrew yeah. community. And something I'm really interested in is uh, what was it about some of these homebrew titles that caught your eye and and were a no brainer of like no, we want these on mm-hmm. uh, on this. And in terms of like um, things that are maybe out there, are there titles and sort of gameplays and styles you're looking for? And mm-hmm. like if you if there's a lot of developers and people listening sure. to the chat like what's if you could give a little a little shopping list you know something that was yeah, like because you, you have are... you have the stats of what people are playing it's like yeah. oh do they like shooters do they like yeah. platformers do you like this yeah. kind of yeah. uh, RPGs? Uh, here, here's, what, my what, what here's my main criteria here's my main criteria like seriously, my main criteria of 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 who or what it gets on uh, on the VCS you talk to me talk yeah. to me you know, and let's see what we can do. Again, you know, with the outs, with the obvious, it, it has to be not an illegal IP. But talk to me. Uh, there's a there's a game for everyone. Not everyone is going to be a puzzle uh, fan. Not everyone is going to be a shooter fan. You know, and the things like that. So I try not to focus too much on. Well, I need a fighter game. Uh, I kind of did that with Skinny mm. and Franco, Fist of Violence. I said we need a beat 'em up game, and Blue right. uh, Blue Sunset uh, Games out of Poland. A, what a bunch of really nice guys. Uh, you know, Skinny and Franco is bloody, and it is uh, has some crude humor. That's part of the genre and, and all that. So it can be much for some people, you know. Uh, but it's all yeah. meant as dark humor, not to be taken seriously. But I that was one of the few times where I said, we need a beat em up game. Uh, you know, we don't mm. have that. So I, I yeah. chased after them on that. And they were just, they turned that around in one month. They said, oh, we're about to publish anyways. Wow. And I said, do you think you can squeeze that on? I know it's a hard ass. And said, well, what's the specs? And I gave them to the information. Oh, this is easy. Yeah, we'd love to put it on the Atari. And they did. Nice. And it was like a month and a half turnaround time of just doing that, some testing to make sure everything worked. But, you know, if you've got a game, and it's, again, not an illegal IP, uh, yeah. just talk to me. And, and, and let's make something happen. You know, I'm not going to say, well, I got enough beat em up games. You know, I got enough shooter games. Who doesn't love a shooter game? If it's fun... Everyone's going to think it's fun, you know, (laughs) so I'm not I'm not going to be I'm not going to be a gatekeeper in that way of saying, you know, I have enough of this one type of game. Bring it on. Right. Bring it on. Okay. You know, excellent. Are there any um, uh, technical standards and sort of best practices as well? Like, is there sort of a is there a floor, if you will, to sort of the Mm -hmm. kinds of homebrews you might look at on even just a technical level? No, I mean. Like John, like John Hancock, he had three games that he proposed on there, and I, I took two of them. The other one I didn't take. I said, I don't think this would do well in the VCS because it was more of a mimic of a Mr. Game & Watch kind of uh, style game. And I just felt that was right. too simplistic on that, and I was like, you know what, John, I, A, thank you for offering that. And, it, and I played it on the VCS, and it was fun and all that, but it just like it really it didn't capture – it was like it belonged on a on a on a game and watch kind of thing. So I, I did a pass on that, and so that's going to be a case by case um, uh, on that. Uh, but, you know, I was like, but these other games, these are these are great. You know, these are great. You know, quote unquote homebrews. Uh, and so I was happy to have uh, John Hancock's game on that. But the Mister, but the I can't remember the name, the title. That that one was just like eh, that's a little too simplistic. And he's like, yeah, I get it. And uh, you just yeah, you know, yeah. and hopefully uh, the um, uh, he's got the Blockum uh, game. Uh, yep. Unfortunately, yeah, we played we that have... on the show the other yeah. day. Yeah, we were talking. We were talking about putting that on the VCS. Unfortunately, he has to go back with the program that he worked with to then do it. You know, because it was uh, made for the was the Sega Sega Genesis or the Sega yeah, Master. Yeah, it's the uh, Genesis. Uh, we just yeah. played the Jaguar. They're making it for the NES, but of course they'd have to yeah. make a different version. So for yours. yeah. Hopefully down the road we'll we'll get that and I'm all, and I'm and I'm fully support of uh of of John you know to get that uh, on there but that's going to be a little bit of work for for him and the programmer to kind of make it into a compatible format on there um, and yeah. if they're going to be doing that work I said well you know maybe take the next step to make it a more modern version of Blockham because you've got a bunch of retros so right. why not go maybe further and do a more uh, modern you know a Blockham recharged as it were you know so we'll we'll see right. where that goes we'll see where that goes. So, if people want to get in touch with you and want to get their homebrews on yeah. the system, or just talk Dave, with you about getting them on, 
David, How do they get in contact yeah, with you? David.page at uh, Atari.com. Uh, I'm in the forums as Davpa is my uh, my gamer name. It's it's <laughs> it's the first three letters of my first name and the last two letters of my last name. And I've had that. You know how I got that name from a yeah. Uh, how did you get it from a questionnaire in 1980? Not a questionnaire, but a, this newspaper article <laughs> in 1980 about uh, Star Wars: The Empire Strikes Back, and someone said, "This is how you make your Star Wars name. You take this and this." <laughs> Yeah. So I've carried Davpa around for what forty years now, uh, and it wasn't until wow. you know online gaming where I said, "Well, I need a username." Oh, why don't I just use Davpa? It's been sitting in my mind yep. for all these years. So that's that's how. <laughs> thank uh, thank Star Wars: Empire Strikes Back for my. Uh, <laughs> so I'm Davpa. Yeah. We should the... we should ask in the forum one day how everybody got their how old yeah. their uh, nicknames are. That's a that's a fun conversation. But you know, when it comes to forums and things like that, I try to be extremely upfront that I'm not I'm not someone who's in the dark with a pseudo name. Uh, you know, just throwing right. rage. I put my name out there, put my face out there to say, I'm giving you my opinion, I'm going to give you my constructive criticism, but I'm not going to hide behind a keyboard. Uh, so please approach me in, with that same respect that, you know, uh, I'm here to listen. I can't respond to everything. I can't magically do everything that everyone requests, but your feedback is really important and it's the genesis of ideas that can hopefully one day become real so that's important it's important to talk to each other and not yell at the sky and but for right <laughs> yes. now if someone wants to yell at me and i'm the representation of the sky go ahead i'm happy to i'm happy to listen so that's my email on the uh yep. on the um atari age forums i'm davpa you can uh, yep. message me there i don't go a ton on the forums anymore so sometimes when you send me a message it could be several days before i get it maybe okay. a week so be patient with that but then also on the Atari Discords. Uh, yeah. yeah, on the yeah. Discords, yeah. So uh, discord.gg slash Atari VCS. Uh, but I'm also on the official Atari Games forum. I'm a moderator there. And so there's there's lots of ways to get a hold of me. So, um, yeah, if you could put in, like, you know, any oh, – well, Twitch sucks with, when it comes to post stuff. <laughs> I yeah, a, no, no. It's, uh, I have it's a, a one-way conversation on Twitch, really. Yeah, I have a love-hate <laughs> relationship with Twitch uh, as I've done streaming, especially during the pandemic. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> but Atari. Uh, uh, David.page at Atari.com. I, okay. I'm probably one of the few people out there who will actually give you direct it to contact to me. And for good, for good <laughs> or bad, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to thank you immensely for coming on the show. It was very brave of you, uh, considering <laughs> the uh, the environment and and the history and people's expectations of what Atari yeah. should live up to based I, on their past. Yeah. And we hope I, you do. I think that's the consensus. We hope yeah. that Atari can live up to what we have in our hearts, right. and we we hope it can be once again. Yeah. And, and it's not and it's not just me. There's a lot of people who are not vocal about it, who are fighting really hard and we have conversations that I don't have to prompt them about about saying, God, is that gonna be good for the community? You know, obviously as a company you have to think of profitability, right? But usually the first thing out of someone's mouth is, is that good gameplay or is that good for the community? So there are people looking out there. Now, obviously, as a company, we have to be profitable, and, and that does take a certain, you know, certain importance, obviously, because otherwise you don't but you exist. can do both. Yeah, but you, you can, can do, do both. both. And there are people out there. There's No one's on a conspiracy. No one's sitting on a pile of money going, I'm going to squeeze everything I can out of those people. <laughs> It really isn't that way, and I, and I wish there was a good way for me to show and express that that there are pe that the people at Atari are not your enemy; they are not. Yeah, it's. I, I think it's just time and demonstrating. Yeah. I think that's what's going to convince people. Yeah. That you're on the right path, and we all hope you and are. Give, and give us that shot. You know, again, I'm I yeah. I came here not to convince every single one of you that Atari has changed. I've come here to talk to you about Atari to show you that it is changing, yeah. and just watch what we're doing, and and really give an honest look to what we've been doing the last two years, as proof yeah. of that. You know, I can't guarantee the future. You know, I can't guarantee that a financial collapse won't happen and all of a sudden Atari goes away. You know, it, it, this, yeah. that's out of people's hands. But 
as long as we can do things and people are enjoying the game and we're making money as people enjoy the game, we're going to keep going and going in that direction. And hopefully that's a direction that everyone's happy with. Excellent. You're a very brave man for coming on here and you did well. Uh, well thank you that. so much, David, for yeah. coming on. And it was uh, a genuine pleasure to talk to you. And I hope to see you at PRGE. If not, I'll I'd stop like by to. the Atari booth and I'd like to. thank them. And, you know, and, and, yep. and everyone out there, have, have, a, have a great gaming session, whatever game you're playing. And, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe I'll be back. I try not to do interviews just because <laughs> I'm not part of the, uh, the PR department, but uh, it's been, it's been fun and I'm happy to talk to people. It's, it's yeah. been fun having you. Yeah, you weathered so it well. Thank you for coming on. I really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you for having me. Bye bye, David. All right, bye, bye. now. Do I just hop on the mic? Oh, sorry. Okay. Do you do what? You I just, was just saying, yeah, I just, just hit hang up. Right, I don't have to do anything. Yeah, I just hit a hang up. All right, I'm out of here. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, immediately, we're gonna have Bob De Crescenzo talk about his his, his experience, experience with Atari VCS. We're gonna hand a controller over okay, to cool. Erlen, and he's gonna play fail safe. Okay, let's give it a go. Let's do it. Uh, okay. It's two hours in though. Whoa. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, well, you haven't played any games yet, so it's all good. Um, so. Let's get Bob on here. Uh, I know he's been in the chat. Thank you so much for subscribing, Repentless VG. Let's just, uh... Hello, Bob. I'm going to switch it's over treat to everyone else can hear yum, you. Yum, oh my yum, God, it's yum. treat time for the cats. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, my ear. That's very loud. Um... Welcome, Bob. Thank you for. Uh, we're gonna feed the cats later. I'm just gonna give them some <laughs> treats like, right now. Yeah, because I know we yeah, have it's a, it's limited like, time. A lot, for a lot on the go. Today. There you can watch some chickens eat their feed. You might be seeing <laughs> come around some at some point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fine. We love cats. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna switch out the name here. One second. So you're you're not David Page. <laughs> Let's. Put your real name in here. I keep thinking that the there we go. bread, but that's get David Gates, not David Page. But it's not, <laughs> I, um, can you angle your camera down just a little bit, yeah, sorry. if you can? Oh, much better. That's awesome. So, Bob, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's always an honor and a pleasure to have you on. Lifetime Achievement Award winner, multi-award winning uh, developer for the 7800. May has made tons of homebrew that we all enjoy and love. Um, it's it's a pleasure to have you on again to talk about Failsafe <laughs> on the Atari VCS. Thanks. It lives on. It has made the jump to a modern console. That's yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. Thank you for having me on, by the way. Um, Oh, it's no problem. It's always a pleasure okay, cool. to have you on again. We're just going to boot it up. So tell us the story of from from the beginning. Like, ha had you heard of the Atari VCS? How did I know David got in touch with you? Yes. How did David get in touch with you? And how did things happen from there? Um, he contacted me about May of 2022 um, first. And I did. I planned on getting a VCS the whole the entire time. Um, oh, okay. But I hadn't hadn't gotten it till this past Christmas. Actually, it was a late Christmas present, but uh, so, but I have one now. Um, he said he it, this was be, obviously before he worked at Atari. He said he was associate of Atari's, and um, he said he liked some of my games and he wanted to see about getting them put on the VCS. And I said, great. I said that's that sounds like a really good plan. <laughs> um, so we went back and forth. <laughs> And the first two games he mentioned actually was Crystal Quest and Super Circus Atari Age. Um, oh, Crystal Quest! Oh, very exciting because yeah. that ties into an Atari IP. Yeah, which is what I was hoping for. Ben but, um, yes, yeah. yeah. And um, there was also some humorous talk about. Could you imagine if we got Casey Munchkin on the uh, on the on the VCS? Oh, what well, ironic the that would be! Ultimate <laughs> irony. The ultimate irony. That would be the best thing ever. But be so uh, good. We had a couple of, of rounds of correspondence, and then and then, like radio silence, um, and I'm going. Okay. What happened? <laughs> now, of course, the first thing that comes in my mind is, all right, they didn't want. They decided they didn't want me. So. Um, yeah. So I, I contacted them a couple more times, and I just then I left it. I, I was a little 
it kind of bothered me a little bit because you know it's it's yeah. uh, one pet peeve of mine is is ignoring me and i i, I hate that <laughs> <laughs> um, we not i don't think anybody really likes uh being ignored especially when there's a dialogue happening and, and you got ghosted it's like oh my god what did i do something yes that's, did I say that's something always wrong? what i think and al can attest to this because there's been times i've contacted him going did i say something wrong <laughs> but anyway um, yeah but didn't know at the time that he was in talks with Atari and started working for them and all this other you know stuff. And um, he finally contacted me back and said, "Look, I'm sorry. You know, I, I now work for Atari and I'm trying to push some some homebrew initiative." I'm like, "Oh, all right, cool. Thank you. Um, thank you for letting me know." And I, I wasn't being sarcastic. I seriously meant thank you for letting me know. And um, yeah. once we. St- a few months later then, in March of this year, we started talking again. That was around the time that Atari acquired uh, Stern's IP, March, April. Yep. Um, and he said, and he switched gears, and he wanted to go to Countermeasure. And I said, oh, okay, cool. Um, so we came to an agreement. I gave him the binary, and I extracted the, the manual, the text for the manual, so they can put it on site. And uh, right, yep. he did mention that he wanted to put some more of the games my game in the VCS store, so I'm really excited about that. I like, I, I like. I finally have something that Atari themselves are actually using. I know it's silly, but it's it's just it's a thing for me, you know. And and countermeasure is an is an Atari title, or they had it on the Atari. Isn't it Atari title itself? No, countermeasure is. Uh, can, wait, did you say fail safe? Countermeasure. Oh, you did say countermeasure. So. Yeah. Yes, count- yeah, countermeasure. Yes, it was on the 5200. In fact, one of my favorite games for the 5200. So, I it's so good. I love this game. I still, I haven't beaten it on advanced yet, but I did beginner and intermediary. I think I've beaten it. So I still have, I still have some gameplay to extract from this game. It's so good. <laughs> cool. Thank you. I'm, I'm actually watching you play it on, on my computer screen. Um, <laughs> Everyone's getting the hang of it. I've never played it before. I don't. So I'm like figuring out. <laughs> shoot the things before they shoot you, and then you're good to go. And, that, and there's some pickup bonuses that give you longer shot or invincibility or speed up, etc. Et yeah. Super awesome. It was. Uh, I, I like the controller, but it's because it's my. It's my oh yeah. Level. How do you like the controller? Yeah, it's really nice. I like Xbox 360 was like my Your kind jam. of game playing on. So yeah. I've I've held a lo- an Xbox controller in my hand for a long. Oh, so you jumped yeah. right into it. Yeah, I've I've forced arcade joysticks on Erlen for so oh, long. He's like, oh, he's in his element. <laughs> oh, now. I don't mind at all. I love the the feel of the arcade joysticks. Yeah. Awesome. It's just it's a feel. It's interesting. It's just like it's like ten thousand hours with. <laughs> yeah. So, so you packaged, you got your game, you're, you've got the binary, you sent the manual to them. So how much involvement did you have in how it looks on the platform in terms of the display and the screenshots? Did they do some of that or did you do some of that? I did none of that. They actually, the, they, it went straight into the emulator. So I, I didn't have to change anything. Um, I was willing to, of course, um, if they yeah. did it, but... Um, I didn't need to change anything, for, at least for this one. Um, and now, who knows if, if they want something else in the future? I don't know. But if they, uh, if, they if I have to uh, put it this way, if I have to change anything, I will. Um, yeah. And yeah. by the way, the, when he talked, when he was talking before about the eighty twenty split, and he said, <laughs> "Yes, that was me." <laughs> I said, <laughs> "He said, oh, you're like you take eighty? Oh my no, god!" But I didn't say it that way. I'm like. <laughs> I, okay. I said, I'm, look, I'm, I'm very naive when it comes to this. The 80-20 is in whose favor? And that's how it started. <laughs> right. And he said, oh, it's in, no, the 80 is in, in, in your favor. And I'm like, oh, okay. Because cool. you never know. Like, they yeah. could, you know, any any company could have some crazy idea in their head that, oh, we deserve more because we're doing this and this and this. But 80-20 is, is very fair uh, compared and comparatively to the... Uh, what's going on out there? Yeah, and he asked me about the price for you know, the lower price for, um, for, for countermeasure. I said, well, maybe it would be a dollar more for, for uh, Bentley Bear. I don't know <laughs> if you can finally get it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so so you, you talked with them, like he said, um, you and them, the, the developer, determined the price and you <laughs> fell upon a price because some places are now selling ROMs. Um, homebrew ROMs like uh, Champ Games has their store up yeah. selling ROMs uh, Muddy Funster is now selling ROMs so there is some precedent 
to compare um, ROM prices out there. And I've noticed the Atari VCS has fairly reasonable ROM prices um, in the scheme of things. So I think this is like kind of going to be the adjustment period for what what we can place the value upon uh, what a ROM is worth, a, a homebrew ROM. And I know there's a big thread in the Atari Age forums that I'm sure everybody is uh, that's watching has looked into. It's like, is $20 reasonable for a homebrew ROM? And people are all over the place, of course. Some mm -hmm. people think it is. Some people think, oh, it's not. I've already paid for it on cartridge. And there's a bunch of factors that go into it. Yeah. So it's kind. it's good that you can talk with Atari and negotiate, yeah. not even negotiate, dictate what you're going to sell the game for within reason. Yeah. Like the, you're not going to sell it for 50 cents and you're not going to sell it for $50. There's somewhere in between. Yeah. yeah. And I, I tend to undercut myself. <laughs> so it's going to be lower. <laughs> right. And, and, and you could say, okay, this game Failsafe has been out for a little bit and people have played it, people have bought it. Um, and say you make a new game that's going on the VCS, yeah. and you're gonna price it a little bit higher because you know nobody's bought it before, it's brand new, there's more value to it, so you know it's, it's going to be a sliding scale even not within developer, but within game. Yeah, yeah, and he did, um, he did ask me, um, you know, how long would it take, or how much we think it would take to create a completely new game for this, and I said, I'll do an exclusive, I have no problem doing an exclusive, I'm <laughs> happy to be on there, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yes, but, it's great to hear that, it's great to hear that, I mean, Thank we you. all love your games, you know that, somebody asked me to, to uh, praise you yes, a, a lot and, and I was like oh, he's been praised a lot already yeah. I don't know if his ego can take it but I'm sure you love it everybody loves to be praised but uh, yeah we of course the community would love to see a new game from you and the opportunity I guess with Atari could be what IPs do they have or what characters Bentley Bear can you extend even further right yeah. Yeah, and, and it's cool because the first thing, when I saw that they bought Stern's IP, okay, yeah, like... Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, but when I saw that uh, uh, they bought Stern's IP, I said, you know, I did Frenzy in Berserk for 7800. And he's like, yeah. you know, <laughs> that was that. That was it. I, I don't know if that's going anywhere or if not, or I don't know. But... Let's hope. <laughs> Let's hope. That'd be amazing. I, yeah. I want to make some changes to it, though. Uh, there's something that's been bugging me about the collision detection on it that I want to make sure it's right before it gets there, if that happens. Um, right. Well, it's an opportunity to, you know, do an update for the game, yeah. right? Here's, and if they're buying up, I'm, I'm here. If, I, if they happen to get IREM, we can put Uniwars on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's true. Yeah, IREM has a lot of properties that a lot of fun shooters as well. Yeah. Um, a lot of games. Oh my God, that'd be a, a really great cooperation that homebrewers may be able to approach Atari with IREM properties. Um, not even just for the VCS, but for just homebrew in general. Mm, yeah, yeah. Like I'm thinking past, past the VCS for Atari age releases or, you know, and people with their own stores. Um, that that would be amazing because it would be. you know i i've been talking with developers about licensing here and there and i've done some research for developers like looking into who owns this and it is hard it's hard to trace the lineage from the 70s or 80s or even 90s to present day trying to find out who owns these things it's yeah. You have to go through news reports and, you know, trademarks, if they've renewed the trademarks, and, and it's, it's very difficult. So having them in one place might be a good thing. It seems like art, especially since Atari seems to be open yeah. to licensing IPs rather than an unknown. So on one hand, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. It depends on how they treat the IPs. Yes, very true, very true. So it, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it'll it'll be not easier because it'll never be easy, but it'll it'll be <laughs> more attainable, more attainable. Yeah, more approachable at least. You'll yes. you'll know who to go to. Yes. It may not happen, but at least you'll know how to even get somebody somebody's contact. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a tough one. I don't think they'll be uh, Atari's going to be buying them anytime soon. I know. <laughs> <laughs> they they're doing pretty good licensing their IPs already. Yeah. Um, so Failsafe has been out for a bit now. Mm -hmm. um, have you had any feedback like from the community, from the non-community? I don't know if there's any way for people to even know, like, oh, who made this? I, I just downloaded this on the Atari VCS. It's, it's a fun game. Have you had any feedback? I've not personally, no. I've seen some people have made videos on YouTube, um, and I, I did watch some of them, and, and it's been generally positive so far so I, yeah that's so it's, it's 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 great I, I appreciate that i appreciate anybody even looking at one of my games <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i guess that would be the best direct feedback is like all the atari vs atari vcs channels because i know there are some people who uh, dedicate their whole channel to atari vcs obviously there's a, enough content now especially with homebrews coming out yeah um do you uh, do you see this as a boon to or a good or a bad thing for homebrew developers um uh, the good thing is like obviously you get another platform for your games yeah but the bad thing is you know some people have a sour taste in their mouth from atari from their past things they've done and it's like, oh, how could you put your game on the Atari VCS? That's the enemy, or whatever they think. Um, I, I, I don't know if you had any feedback. Probably not. You, you said you haven't had any. But did you fear any feedback from that? It's like, oh, you're putting your game on the Atari VCS? Uh, you're dealing with the enemy. It was a thought. Um, it, it was a thought. But I, I know that it's not the same Atari as it was just He's flying around there. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, the, yeah, I'm watching the video too. <laughs> I'm distracted. I'm like, oh, he's going crazy. He got the S, the speed up. I, I know it's it's a different a different tar than it was just a, just a couple of years ago. So um, I, I just hope people will realize that. But I, I uh, it was a thought. It was a thought. But I went ahead anyway because, it, like I said, a couple about 20 minutes ago, I, I I'm. I always wanted. This was a dream of mine to get it on an, an actual Atari unit. So now it's happened. So I'm, I'm I can die peacefully now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I mean, I mean that is that is cool. It's like you can say my game, my actual game, was on an actual Atari console licensed through Atari. Yeah. It, it's the same feeling as like I got my game on a physical cartridge through Atari Age. Yeah. It's it's a dream come true, you know, for anybody to get this kind of level of satisfaction from maybe a, a childhood fantasy of like oh you know you i've heard stories of people writing to atari i have this game idea especially john champo did you as well about his mount his mountain game and they're like no 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 we're not doing that game it's that's keep going with what you're doing you're doing great but now it's like oh it can be realized this is you know we can put out real games and on cartridge. I made it the farthest I've gotten. So Good job, Erlen. Are you doing novice? You should do novice. Just oh, okay. Because um, I feel like if I beat even this, and, and like... even, hmm? even me talking to Atari, it's like, oh my god, I'm like talking to Atari. That's yeah. cool. Or even like Atari age has been Atari for us. Yeah. For 20, 30 years. Yeah. Uh, 20 years or 25 years almost. Um, they have been Atari, and and in the minds of a lot of people, they still are Atari. They've been holding the torch. They've been Absolutely. keeping the torch lit for 25 years. And Absolutely. I think a lot of the negativity and blowback might be stemming from that. Is like we don't want to betray Atari age. We don't want to, you know, do anything that can jeopardize what has been built up, this amazing community. And we don't want to see Atari steamroll over Atari age or what's been happening with and pave the road with money and just Atari age is left in the dust and I think that's where a lot of the fear stems from yeah um, from, from in my opinion and I I I'm also afraid that Atari age is going to be left in the dust because they've got a console especially they're releasing cartridges now yeah. as well they've released homebrew on cartridge with Mr. Run and Jump it's like that's an actual homebrew on a 2600 card 
where does this leave Atari Age if a huge company with huge pockets can do exactly what Atari Age does? It's funny you should say that because what I did, what I did do is I checked with Al before I said yes to that. I said, um, mm -hmm. Al, do you mind that I do this? Um, yeah. Because I don't want to. You're you're my loyalty. I even said that to him. I said you're my loyalty because you're hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. So I, so he's like, go for it. He's like, <laughs> so I was like, right, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I I feared doing this episode. Oh, really? Um, bringing, bringing on Atari to the show. You know, they, they are viewed by some people as the enemy. Mm -hmm. And me to even give them a platform to talk, to essentially, you know, even talking is promoting their product. Me buying this Atari VCS is like, ah, can, should I? Can I? Can I do this? <laughs> um, is this a betrayal of yeah. what, what I've been a part of? And I went, no, I have to cover this. I have to talk about this. Um, if I don't talk about this, it, it, seems, it seems wrong, but I, my loyalty is to the community, 100%. My loyalty is to the developers. My loyalty is to Atari age. Yeah. And that is never going to waver. Um, yeah. I wanted to bring this on because it's an additional opportunity just like um, Argon, to put their games on Argon. Yeah. yeah. Your games on Argon, other people's games on Argon. And it's another platform to expand, make money, show off your games. And that's all I view it as. That's not the community. This is the community. That's, that's yeah, that's very cool. I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. And by the way, if, if Al had said, I'd rather you not, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have gone for right. it. Um, so, but yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, if Al said, oh, you're, you're bringing Atari on, um, that's not a good look. Yeah. Um, I really don't like that. I'd be like, good, it's canceled. Because uh, that's, you know, that's whatever. I, I don't, I don't. I think it's important to talk about it because everybody is talking about it and to give and to ask these hard questions to Atari. It's like, are you going to be an in, uh, 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 a force for good or a force for evil for, for our community? And I, and I want them to be a force for good. Yeah. And it sounds and like they're heading in that direction, which is very, very cool. We hope. And I think we all hope. Yeah. Um, we all loved what Atari was. Sorry, I'm talking too much. No, no. <laughs> but, um, we we all loved it, what Atari was and what it started and what they had going back in the day and bringing us lots of games and I hope they can cohabitate and boost what is happening with the community and just amplify it more and not take over and not not be the community not represent the community not people see them as what has happened over the the last decades yeah yeah very 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 well put yeah uh, <laughs> um and mother three says quite rightly so james is for me it's just a name grab atari is a community now um they may uh Esmer says they may be releasing games on carts but so far i haven't seen anything worth purchasing on a cart um I have downloaded several recharge games and purchased a couple of other games, but the cards, it's Apple and Oranges, compares to what's too available on Atari Age. Oh, there you go. A, a new box from Adve uh, Atari. Yeah, Part of that I, this very one, expensive. Oh my God, you shelled out $100. It's the only one okay. I have. <laughs> well, I, if you're going to buy one, that's the OG, right? This, yep. this was my favorite game. I had to get this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, a lot of people saw that as a cash grab. Um, the ten times a hundred dollar cartridges. Yeah, yeah, that was. And box, can... They are, they are very nice. All I can see of them as they're just collector pieces, really, yeah. because you can go to the flea market or Portland Retro Gaming Expo and pick up those games for a dollar fifty cents. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So if you're buying it, people know what they're getting into when they buy them. Yeah. So, you know, it's fine. You know, it's a capitalist market. Sell them, buy them. 
it's all good you did and it's a nice they're really nice they're really not i don't know about a hundred dollar nice but they're really nice yeah. that was the only way because I, I saw the full set and i looked i'm like how much it Oh. oh no 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 no! <laughs> my heart oh my god yeah thousand u.s dollars oh canadians are dying yeah <laughs> yeah I, I and this was actually this was a birthday present um from from Rose oh Peach, well but even better yeah <laughs> you didn't have to pay for it <laughs> um yeah Thru thrust says 100 percent milk and collectors um yeah yeah so some I, people don't like it I just wanted this one. That's, that's, Adventure is my, my big one so on here, so that's why. But yeah. So I, I know you have to take off yes. uh, very shortly, like right now. So I want to thank you so much okay. for coming on the stream and um, talking about um, Failsafe briefly, about uh, getting on the Atari 7800. And anything you want to add about your experience of getting it on there or the future of anything or anything else you want to say? Um, Thank you for having me on. Um, <laughs> I, I, um, it's, I, I, I appreciate people who have bought it and people doing reviews on it. It's, it's a game that I, it was a personal favorite of mine on the 5200 anyway, so that's why I wanted to kind of yeah. move it onto the 7800. Um, and uh, that's, that's, that's really it. I, I, again, thank you. I can't thank you guys enough, really. I, I'm very appreciative. <laughs> Oh, thank, thank you, Bob. Uh, the trophies are coming. Tanya's <laughs> down to the last two. She is making them this year. That's why they're taking so long, uh, like an excessive amount of time. Uh, but they'll be, um, I'll be contacting you and all the other developers w about their trophies from the Atari Homebrew Awards from last year. And you can add it to your, uh, <laughs> add it to your collection up there. She, and she, Rosemary, did, there you go. She put oh. it in the box and the, and the thing in the back. It's, it's very cool. Oh, it's that's. Cool. That's awesome. So you, you better get her get doing another one because it's coming soon. Cool. And the new ones look really cool. So um, um, thank you for coming on. Always a pleasure to talk to you. And I'm um, looking forward to talking to you again on the show in the future. Man, this is a sick game. I'm really enjoying it. Oh, this game is amazing. Thanks. Anybody who has not played this game, it I'm is like, unbelievable. Uh, it's so much fun. Thank you. I, I probably should be on novice, but it's. I'm really. I'm finding like the range is such a huge factor. Oh, like, it's yeah. You out have the to know. Timing and the range, and yep. then you get these upgrades. I almost get too excited when I get an upgrade and kill myself. <laughs> ah! I'm like running into things. It's. A, it's. But there's also a value to being calm. I'm really. I, yeah. I just wanted to before you leave, just let you know I'm really enjoying playing your game. I've never played this before. This is awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. There's two things. Quick things to remember. Your angle yep. shots are different than their angles. Your angle is at a different angle than theirs. Yeah. And they have a advantage. I forgot if it's horizontal or vertical, and you have an advantage on the opposite way. If, it, if this is horizontal, uh. I forgot what. I forgot which way I did it, but so just so you know, it keeps, yeah, so you got to know your angles. That makes sense. I've been finding a lot of like um, success in these diagonal shots over these ah. lines, and then I feel like when you when you go straight or up or down, you sort of have to like um, time, really time where they are. And yeah, these clusters of guys are tough. <laughs> yeah, so it'd be a beautiful game, man. I'm like, there's actually a lot more, a lot going on with this game. Yeah, it's Thank great. You. So good. Thank you. Well, Thank you so much, Bob, and uh, we will talk with you soon. Thank you again. Okay, bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. Uh, it's always great to talk with Bob. Um, wonderful guy, makes excellent games. Oh my God. This is so good. And I'm like, right now I have the one that'll shoot across the whole screen. Oh. So I'm trying to. But I, they run out, so you, Yeah, it's. You just, always. I, I find you always want to collect it. No matter what. You, oh yeah. But you can time it up so you like use it to the fullest extent and then collect the next one. Yeah, and um, okay, like you're so invincible. Just go for it. Oh, it's right. I don't out. think I'm invincible. Am I invincible? I this is invincible. One? Yeah. Oh, it's just, I don't know them. So the problem is, yeah, is that like three or four. I don't want to run in and think I'm invincible. Oh, so God. let's switch to the next game. Cool. Uh, we're gonna do the written interviewish written information. So hold oh, down the, or press the this one. Yeah. Just press it. Okay. Cool. Oh. And exit the dashboard. Okay, sick. Oh, do you think I can lose this now? Oh yeah, sorry. Okay, perfect. Oh, oh, oh my god. No, no worries. So much, so oh, what, which one is it? It's um. Um. Well, we're gonna do Dion next, so you can either play Amoeba Jump, or Tower of Rebel. 
Let's do Tower. I haven't played Tower yeah. um, very much. I've t done tons of Amoeba. Oh, it's nice to hear out of my left ear. <laughs> it is. It's like, <laughs> oh, my God. I've been hearing in mono oh, for yeah, so I long. Remember this one. Oh, let's get the chat back on here so it's easy to see. Okay. There we go. The cats ticked you. Cats are ticked off. You skipped treat time. I did. Um, you had to, though. We'll do treat time after. Like, it's only a brief interview uh, with Dion. Um, so... I don't remember. Is that can I jump? Um, you can hang, which is very important. And when you hang, you can get across um, uh, chasms. Oh, oh, a little too late. Do you get the hang of it? So if you press down, no, just to tap it, just tap it. You're hanging. Okay, cool. And then you can jump across to there. There you go. That's oh, a very that's huge. Like you have to know that move. Yeah, otherwise in this game, you're screwed. Because you can't. No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> Jumped into the light. It's getting too Aliens, uh, kill too, me. Too excited. So uh, Dion, uh, Dionoid, uh, wrote uh, some interview notes because he was going to be initially on the show um, to talk about his experience with the Atari VCS. And, um, but he's unfortunately not feeling well. Um, hopefully hope he feels better soon. Yeah, hope you feel better soon, Dion. If you're watching this now or um, on YouTube later, um, so here's his notes. He said, "I initially bought an Atari VCS 800 because I thought it would be cool to develop a Homebrew 20, 2600 games on an actual Atari machine, and also because I really like the looks of the machine. Reminded me of a wood grain Atari 2600. They, I gotta give them this." They nailed the look of this. Oh yeah, it's slick. It is a the design of that gorgeous, looks like sleek machine with all the ports in the back. It is clean and just the glowing Atari. Well, it symbol. looks retro but also contemporary, which is what yeah. you want. They they really nailed it. Yeah, the cats got some no effort treats. They they, they lucked out. It didn't have to work because we couldn't. Yeah, we we're running. We were running short on time, so we, I had to get Bob on before he had to go. Um, so I had to give them. No. As soon as oh. I ring those bells, they'll be oh, back in so two good. seconds. Yeah. So they've been they've been trained, man. They oh, know they. What's up. I yesterday, I was watching um, the show back for quality, and they know the intro of the show. Yeah. Dun, 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 and they were like, they just look treats. I was I was watching it upstairs in the living room. And they perked up when they heard the intro of the show. The food motivation. Yeah. Is, oh, is they large. are trained. Master KSI says most underestimated Tower of Rubble is an awesome multiplayer Ooh, game. Not yes. Man, um, 666, though. Not it is a very, very uh, cool multiplayer game. Um, because you. Okay, I actually want to try it. Let me see for a second. Sure. I want to try these buttons. Okay, it does. It, they do work. I don't know. See, there's two player. Okay, sick. One player pro, one player. I'm definitely player. not pro. <laughs> so we'll go I'm gonna player. go with just one player. I think the pro is the randomization of what's coming down because so, this is a pattern. Yeah. Um. Uh. Continuing on with Dion, for some, for quite some time, I was thinking for a way to disturb my games digitally. My thoughts were: wait for Albert to impl implement. His, which I think requires a new version of the store software, which he's working on. Uh, however, it was clear this wasn't his top priority, and knowing how busy Al is, I didn't expect that to happen with the foreseeable future. I guess the that's the reason for Champ Games to create their own digital download no. platform. <gasps> Uh, the ne <laughs> next one is I considered itch.io, but with the amount of indie games on this platform, my games probably wouldn't be noticed. Actually, that's a very important point. And um, I mean, David brought it up mm -hmm. that right now there aren't many games, especially homebrew on the VCS. And you will stand out Absolutely. if you put your game on there. You are uh, a big fish in a small pond at the time, at this time. And he compared it to like the Switch or other environments like you are one of tens of thousands of games on there because they can just keep throwing them on like constantly throwing them on no matter what quality and you'll just be added to the pile you won't be featured like this game is featured in the game section like it is top top billing it featured so that's that's a very good um point actually uh -oh. uh -huh. so what scary. happens if you close the door and ring the bell we'll have cats scratching at that door trying to beat it down like like uh like it's a like it's a, a movie with an axe. Oh my God. dude i'm screwed look oh my whole platform was gone but i got pb 96 nice 
I think the loop point is around 200, where oh. it starts back again. Because right now, it builds the islands on the side, and then it kills the gaps, and then destroys the middle part. And then it starts building up the middle part again. So you, uh, the, the critical point is when there's no... There's a gap between the middle and the sides, and you have to make that jump. And then the next critical point is going back to it. No! Oh! Uh, the colors seem to be a bit off in Tower of Rubble. The flashes should be yellow and the lava red. Oh, sure. Um, it, was, it looks pretty good to me, based on what I know. I mean, we can actually compare it. I can switch over oh, you sure from can. the 2600. Oh, oh, oh good jumping. Um, a few months ago, I saw the announcement of the new game Alien Abduction on the new Atari VCS 800 written by John Van Ryzen, author of Hero. That got me thinking, what if I can release my games in the Atari VCS store? I contacted David Page and he was very interested in getting my games in the Atari VCS store. He knew about my games already and he thought they would be a great fit. I made some small improvements to Amoeba Jump, like adding an easy mode, which making controlling the Amoeba less sensitive, and changed the animations of the platforms when the Amoeba misses the lower platform and falls down. I thought there was something new in Amoeba Jump. It goes whoosh. Um, the easy mode seems to work better with the Atari VCS 800 modern controller. It is pretty good. While the hard works better in the classic controller. Oh, good night, Halloween Jack. You're night, in man. Europe, I'm guessing. Um, or somewhere where it's really late. Um, no. Getting my games in the VCS store was pretty smooth. Actually, David did all the work, creating the, creating the three layered menu images, store images, game description, based on the original artwork from Amoeba Jump and Tower of Rebel. Thanks to Nathan Strum and Dave Dries for providing the original artwork files and allowing me to reuse it. The Atari VCS 800 is a pretty open system, so I could test my ROMs using the actual version of Stella 6.6, .6, which is what's on here, uh, which is used on the Atari VCS 800. Uh, I found that the save key isn't supported in Stella on the v Atari oh. VCS 800, which is caused by how 2600 games are closed and then choosing exit to dashboard on the Atari VCS 800. Technically speaking, this is doing a hard process kill um, of Stella instead of a normal exit. So the Stella's code to save the save key changes on the exit is then skipped. I guess it depends on where and when you do the save key calls. And I'm guessing he's doing the calls at a time when it doesn't work for exiting on the VCS. But who knows? It'll be different on every game, I'm sure. Pro tip, if you hook up a keyboard, you can go to the Stella menu and remap your buttons. That is correct. And uh, I'm going to go get the keyboard right now. Oh, shit. Okay, cool. Oh, my God. Amoeba. Oh, Amoeba. I thought I'd jump over because I was, like, having, I'd say, varying success with <laughs> Tower of Rubble. But it's good, to, it's good to try new games. Damn it. To pretty out of practice with Atari games, honestly. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because yeah, you're so in practice because it's like these styles of games you're just like oh, so used to over playing. It. Yeah. Versus like I, ha I haven't played a lot of like these games over my lifetime and also not, not being on the show as much. I don't, I think I lose practice a little bit. But also every game's different. I think you're so good at picking up new games. It's quite oh. a skill because you do it all the time. You're just constantly playing like new all stuff. variety. Yeah, of games. versus That's like I'll often have a game I'm kind of playing and then I'll just play that one game for like a couple months oh, and run geez. out of interest. You know. Oh, see, yeah. We'll just make it tiny. There we go. What's happening? Oh, it was too big for the screen because I don't have a profile really oh, set up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cause... For the VCS yet. So we're just going to do a tiny one. So get on a platform that's stable. Okay. And stay there. Okay. So you can actually... It's running Stella. 6.6. Uh, .6, so you can actually um, break out of the game if you plug in a keyboard. Wow. And if you have a mouse, you can do more things. This is... I can't really do much here. Um, but if you go to this, I can. So if you go to like input, you can remap um, the devices. 
uh, and change like all the, the keys on there for like the black and white switch and stuff like that. Um, but like I asked David, will that, will the mapping happen more? Cause there are like, there is no black and white switch mapped. Yeah. Um, the difficulty settings aren't mapped as, as well. Um, but there you go. So you, you can, it is Stella. It is a computer. It's running Linux. You can plug a keyboard into it and it's all the same. It's a little bit easier. If you did, have the mouse how long too. did you get this? Was this, is this a new purchase? Um, um, I, yeah, it's very new. I got it a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, cause I don't think I've ever seen it um, in your collection no, no, before. No, no, no. It's brand new. Cause I held off cause it was like, why would I buy it? You said it's, it was hard it's to a computer. get a hold of, right, with the light. Like... Because it's not available in Canada. You literally cannot buy it in Canada. Which is tough because it's like this community of people who like... They're um, all over the world, right? Yeah, it's not... Also, like, you, I would regard it... Um, oh. oh, damn it. Biting off. I would regard it as like, in, in, in comparison to, say, other things, it's more of a niche. And the reality of niche yes. communities is they tend to disperse across the yes. that's, and that's when you have a, a, a smaller community um it just turns out i think it's more international you know yeah um unless it's very like regionally focused but there's nothing regional about Atari. <laughs> it's just... no it was pretty worldwide i mean yes u.s was the biggest market because it's a, a country with oh. a big population too big of a jump yeah. um but yeah, uh yeah hopefully they you. open up because people have to like import them yeah, not, well, it's not just, from Atari. Like, to me, it's weird because it's like, well, this is a there's a lot of money on the table, as they would say in business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? exactly. Like, and and it sounds like they just need to do the boxes, but there might be some more legal framework to selling, because you have to set up VAT collections for for Europe for distribution, yeah, and and for uh, taxes in different countries, and there's different legal wranglings. Yeah. I mean, it's easy for two to, guys to just. Just do ourselves it. playing video games <laughs> to yeah. be like, hey, what, what did you like international company do this? We're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just tell them what to do <laughs> while we're playing Amoeba Jump, you know? Because <laughs> because Al had to deal with that uh, with the Atari Age store. Um, Is know. there a way to like go? F I've, I feel like um, I was able to move left or right with more speed. He has it. made it so every there's always a way out. Yeah. So you just have to know which platform. <laughs> 100%. to go to sorry oh, just for startling everyone that's all good uh, the cat was uh trying to destroy cables as he likes to do those yeah, are his favorite the, flavor it's the critical <laughs> that's the that's the critical attack right do there. they even own ips outside the u.s oh that's a bigger is, question. The question these are they these may... are the smart questions because you have to deal with every country individually i mean yeah. they could sell it to china china doesn't care about ips no not at all <laughs> of course They'll just copy you everything. You can get a Gucci bag from... That's right. <laughs> but is it? Oof. No, it's not. It definitely isn't. <laughs> um, It'll smell like Also, always interesting plastic. listening to someone talk who's kind of representing a company rather than themselves. It's a very different tone, you know? He was fairly... He was he pretty was, relaxed. He was relaxed, but you could definitely tell there's like he, he was carrying the burden of the company on his back right which is well, just yeah. it's his job right that's what you do like if i'm speaking tough. for like the company i work for you you speak very differently than like yeah somebody uh, joked that uh, when his phone rang it's like oh it's your boss yeah you know, right. it's... like get off this yeah Twitch. Dude, what, how did you you could don't say that oh my <laughs> god you're fired <laughs> it, was yeah. a good, it was a good joke though David Page is no longer <laughs> no longer employed. His uh, words did not. He was escorted from the building uh, on the afternoon of Friday. That well, he's not in the building, <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, but, but also privileges were revoked. But also, what a well-spoken guy! Like I was really, yeah. I was a really like I was quite impressed by his like just his ability to kind of like just speak like i was like oh and he's you go very he should be the pr guy like honestly i kind of thought he was when he's, <laughs> yeah I when thought he's he... like i'm not the pr guy i was like oh you you seem like the guy yeah i mean he's in um marketing and development so he's oh, in that marketing makes sense. So he is he's affiliated with the market but yeah so he does you know he does have to talk about the system and sell it to at least developers anyway yeah yeah amoeba jump it is a classic masterpiece my it is friend. a masterpiece one of the of best game. of the best it's simple oh. it's addictive it's one of those games he's think. not on i would love to compliment yeah. his game um, oh yeah but i mean i'm sure that like he he's is... heard me talk about how much i like it but yeah dion <sighs> is you know he is fully solidified 
his mastery of the 2600 just, with a load runner. Yeah. It is a gargantuan achievement um, of game. Oh, I look away. I'll give you the powers. If oh, you like. sure. Uh, oh, you made it. Oh my god. <laughs> just, well, dude, I'm just stressed. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, I'll do one, and then um, I'm not going to do well. That's all good. This is yeah, a, it's, it's interesting. This is an arcade controller, so. It's interesting taking, you know what I mean? Like, it is a minute of kind of uh, translation. Um, yeah, it, but it was great to, I didn't think that Atari would come on the channel. <laughs> also, just like the amount of time he gave was Oh, he probably insane. would have talked ooh, a lot longer, too. Well, because, oh, like, you know, you think about, like, most most kind of company spokespeople, it's like you get, like, 20 minutes. Yeah. If that, 15 in and uh, out, right? I mean, he did say it was c kind of on his own time, he said that, I think. So we're going to play John Van Ryzen's uh, game. He is the uh, developer of Hero, mm -hmm. which is uh, a beloved game. And he has made a new game. Uh, exclusive like this is the only play place you can play this game right now on the Atari VCS um, and it has a lot of similarities to um, hero oops like that ah get a new oh god oh god but the controls are like really different I got it see so you have to rescue somebody you have to go down levels. Some classic gameplay right there. Oh, yeah. Rescue the princess. Oops. Oops. Yeah, rescue the princess. But this one has a lot more um, timings. Strategic timing. No, oh, keep going down. Because there's... Oh, I should get that heart because I'm going to die, possibly. <laughs> and you press down. Run away. Just ah, like in Hero. Oh, God. No, oh, my God. No! no! There we go. Rescue. Alien abduction. Yeah, so... This is basically an Xbox controller. Dude. Yeah. Do you it, know what I mean? Like, it's like... It is now the de facto controller for everything. But, like, um, but uh, like uh, PlayStation like, is different. Like, they have the... Rather than the bumpers, they've got the kind of... um, uh, They, they have double triggers, which is also good because bumpers go out really fast. They actually uh, are, like, the first okay. to let go. So having triggers... Triggers because they're, like, more gradual. Um, like, everyone's Xbox controllers, uh, the bumper style of this, because it's actually kind of, like, easy to get jammed in here. So uh. these are the first buttons to go. Right, so you have um, to be very careful. Which is why, I, in some ways, I prefer the PlayStation model because I've never seen PlayStations um, go with the dual um, triggers, the newer kind of versions. Oh, God, that was oh. with, with the top and bottom, and it's oh. also nice because it's kind of gives you some some different feel and option. But obviously, like you know, playing like a high paced action kind of FPS is different oh, demands God. on the controller than like Did kind of terrible. one button games, right? Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's very clean. And then the, like, yeah, A B Y X. Uh, God damn it. That whole standard. And then it's yeah, funny, the like, standard. the X square oh, triangle circle. Okay. You know? Um, so on this, you press down to land. Oh, what is up going to, uh, Up to take off and then down to land. It, it's, oh, so I actually have, like, thrusters. I didn't realize. What yeah. That. It's a very different control scheme. And, from, and do I have like a certain amount of energy? You do, and it's constantly going oh, down. Oh god, what a nightmare! It's and that gives you extra life. How, how come I'm not going down? Oh, you have to press up, and then down to land. Go! Oh, you ran out of time. Oh. This is very time constraining, but uh, which is good because you know people who, who are good at Hero, this is going to be a good challenge. Yeah, it is. It is quite different than Hero. I don't think you can kill that guy. Ah, I'm, I'm, run. Just, I'm just dead. <laughs> I think you have to avoid that dude. Oh god. Twenty four hour stream today. We're almost done, actually. Uh we got we got our interviews in. Oh, oh. that's energy, I think. You wanna get that? Okay. Oh, not much energy. Oh it's you have health? Oh it's health, it's not energy. Oh god. I don't think you get any extra energy. You just gotta go run! Run! <laughs> I think if it's green, it can be killed. It takes a lot. Uh, okay. Oh. What does he have to stab the person to rescue them? <laughs> that is a good question. The old. Oh, see, like because. Run. Well, because I, I, you don't. It's weird. You wouldn't assume that like you land on a platform, you have to push up to go down. <laughs> it is very. It's very different, but it um, allows for a couple different things, like setting off oh. the bomb, like the dynamite. Oh. 
but and it also allows you to go down really quick Makes and sense. land where you want by pressing down it just it's a it's something you have to rewire your brain oh like run there you go now you're getting it i will watch the interview with the atari guy tomorrow <laughs> atari guy atari atari in quotes it's not my atari did i want those goggles we we missed out we missed out on the real life goggles <laughs> real life goggles Oh, skipping the heart. I should have grabbed it, but so far I'm not But, doing. you know, there's a time limit, too. Like, dying... I mean, dying for the heart is fine, because... Oh, now you're getting the hang of it. Sort of. Yellow thing is energy, yeah. And I don't think... You get any more energy. You have to press... Yeah, get that heart. Press down, and go get the heart. Might as well. I want my heart. And then run. Quick, 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 quick. Nice, nice, just in time. Barely, barely got it. Yeah, it does sh share some similarities. You have a jetpack. There are dynamite. You have a certain amount dynamite. of energy. There are things... Things in this shoot. They didn't shoot before. What? Oh, you're going to shoot them multiple times. <sighs> or just, like, not... So he did say... Oh, 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 into the... Into the void. Into the void. Just gonna... There you go. Good thing is if you die, you get all your energy back to try again. So if you get to <laughs> it's a, true. if you get to a point where there's a heart, you can kind of die oh, over I, and over I there. I see what this idea is. Ooh, that's pretty good. That's what you're supposed to do, I think. Ooh, the the red glowing walls are everything kills you. you in this game. Every oh oh your energy oh oh got your life back. Oh what? Barbed wire fence. <laughs> Oh, that was your last life. That's okay. Um, okay, I'll pass it over. Let me... I think you do have to hold it down to get to the menu. Exit the dashboard. And I think we're... I think we're pretty... Pretty done here. Yeah. Um, Beefy episode. Definitely one for the YouTube catalog. It is. And uh, also kind of a historic moment. Uh, yeah, um, just in talking term. with Atari, it was uh, very interesting. Uh, I knew uh, some people in the chat had some some strong opinions. I uh, we did a good job, James, of like balancing all the sides and asking some uncomfortable questions and pressing and. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it'll play out. They'll yeah, we have they'll yeah. let me know. <laughs> <laughs> they will. Uh, there's some people in the forums that don't hold back ever. Yeah, of course. Um, which is which is good. You need a whole. It's so hard to in those moments when you're when you got someone in front of you because you also want to like. Um, well, you don't want them to hang up. <laughs> you don't want them to hang up, and you also want them to maybe want to come back at some point. If yeah, that's... I'd rather have a dialogue with Atari than them go. No, you're a show that just yells at me, and yeah. I don't want to come on, and I don't want to give our side of it or our plans or how we're going to work with the community. So it is a balancing act. It's like, we want them to do better. Mm -hmm. We want them to be a good Atari, <laughs> not a naughty Atari, interfering and taking over and kind of... E a good word would be eclipse. Yeah. To eclipse the community and just say, we're here. Whatever you did before is nothing. And we are now... We dominate the conversation. And obviously nobody here wants that. Yeah. And it's also hard, too, because with people um, in his position, it's also his job not to answer certain questions, and we can continue to ask him. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, we, certain, we can, and, and he, you know... And he, he, and he might not be the guy to ask, or, like, can't even say, right? Oh, reaching out to Wade Rosen. I'm sure you could come on for an interview. Um, yeah, maybe in the future, uh, it's a good uh, person to reach out to um, for some other update. I mean... For something else that's happening with the Atari VCS, I'm not going to focus on it, really, because what can you do? Like, Yeah, and it's not really about... I feel like... It's about... I want to focus on the homebrew. Yeah, it It's be, not about the VCS. Yeah, I could I could be the, wrong with saying this, but I feel like the show's not about the, the hardware that Atari's no. selling. It's about the people create, making games, and it's the community that you're engaged in, and like... Yeah interesting getting to sort of have this kind of one-off side but yeah we're, we're not in the business of selling VCSs. promoting the vcs no. it's kind of like and that's, that's their business yeah and that's also your deal if you want to buy it or not yeah. um, I'm, I'm here to cover the homebrew aspect of it 
and the homebrew side of it. So if there's another thing that comes up that is that is interesting to the community or important to the community, um, like they've made some big deal, they've got more licenses that open up certain ports, like say it opens up Bob's catalog of Pac-Man, yeah, or um, John Shampoo's catalog of various um, companies, IPs, then it'd be like, oh, that's that's something interesting. Maybe I can yeah. get weighed on the show and talk about how this could affect the homebrew community. And it's like, how does this benefit? I'll have them on if it's something that can benefit the homebrew community. And having them on today is like, okay, but what can you do for us? Yeah. Here's our here's what we've built up. Not me. <laughs> I've only been here a short while. But all you guys have built up for 20, 25 years since the discontinuation of this hardware and keeping it alive what can they do for you to use they're going to be using your homebrew it's like how can this benefit the homebrew community and he he laid out some good stuff it's like you can put your stuff on here you can make your money you can widen your audience and goes and the install base is maybe playing modern stuff on the vcs like all the reimagined things or modern homebrew and they go oh what's what's amoeba jump what is what is tower of rubble and they go oh this is cool and maybe they'll investigate further and go oh there's a homebrew community and there's more cool games on here i don't know but anyway <laughs> it's content right that's the thing that's interesting from their point of view i think yeah. something that like was a fact that was sort of laid out that i thought found it fascinating is that we're a startup with a big name which i think is an yeah. interesting idea to think of that actually like a, you because you think of like microsoft sony like the competitors yeah. nintendo and then you do think about atari and i'm like mm -hmm. I, I think he's probably right i don't have any real sense but it's obviously atari as a company it does not have the same financial structure as microsoft it's like they have some money to throw around they've been they've been hawking hats and t-shirts for a while and they're throwing around tens of millions of dollars acquiring ips right now so they have a game plan yeah so that, okay that's so, so that might have been a little bit more of a yeah shroud but they may be running out of money now and and they're pushing the vcs i don't know i don't know the who, financials who knows? i don't who think it's going but it did but it did strike me as like <laughs> yeah this is not you know this is an interesting sort of like just a part of and it, just to think that the the legacy and history of this name atari might might kind of eclipse on some level the actual like day-to-day -day operations of this company yeah it it's for future us to discuss <laughs> when when and if it whatever happens yeah trust yeah they but, think money uh, well, we yeah. don't think money this is a love that's the other thing too i was yeah. going to say this is so interesting is you do when you do talk to people like that you sort of see that this is this is business yep. you know and that is like a a part of this stuff and they're kind of like we got no problem until you engage in business you know like <laughs> is it like until so you start selling and now we're in this is an interesting kind of thing and and, and, I, and I find business ruins a lot of things like money ruins a lot of things that you get into that you love and it can yeah. you know tear things apart and the, it and it sucks. Well, um, the the spirit of this community is not really like business. It's, no, it's and it's... and essentially, everyone can ignore Atari in this community and not even pretend they don't even exist. The community will continue on with or without them. Yeah, they can be relevant or as relevant or irrelevant to this show, the forums, Atari Age. We can just ignore them, not give any homebrew at all. They 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 really have to earn the homebrew, yeah. <laughs> essentially. Uh, and, you know, some people have been convinced. Dion, Bob, um, I am convinced so far they're on the right track. They have to continue on this track to continue to earn the trust. I don't... As far as I know, Thrust, the... Atari Age store has nothing to do with Atari. And even more so that Atari IP is still in the Atari Age store. Honestly, in some ways it is pretty cool that they haven't shut that down because there's other companies yeah. that would. <laughs> and, and he said they're very aware of what goes on in the community. Yeah, so I don't know. Um, 
Uh, I think the removal of unlicensed games has to do with the Atari part of Atari Age. Their name is attached even though they don't own the domain. Does this mean they can apply pressure? I don't know. Yeah, same. Or... That, we don't know. We don't know. That's really... What a beautiful... Between Al and, and Atari. What a beautiful, weird little gray zone all this lands in. You know what it's, I mean? Like It's, it's just, super gray. <laughs> it's the whole... We're like, it's just no... It's all in this kind of like weird spot, yeah, right? It's very nebulous. We're at a a point right now where things have changed a lot it seems and that's like... why people are very worried about atari worried about it, the future of atari aged if worried about the future of homebrew in terms of ports people can make it whatever games they want um but a lot of people you know are just like what's happening my hair's on fire i'm panicking and we just uh we hope this is gonna turn out good yeah. <laughs> And, I'll tell you one thing. Yeah, I ain't buying no NFTs. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm good. I, I do. I the only benefit I see is yeah, you can sell digital representations of artwork, and but they can just sell another one. <laughs> I, you just, yeah. But a painter can just paint another painting as well. That's exactly right. Except digital is digital, and you can just click copy paste. Right. That's the thing. Um, it's, it's, with a painting, it's, you. It, literally this is version two it's a real thing yeah. right it is it's all investment stuff i think mostly this guy's falling yeah it is <laughs> um yeah i'm it's... i don't care about nfts they're weird and yeah they're it's... weird i mean i love watching videos about people talking about <laughs> scamming so there's yeah. amazing narratives around the thing oh, but like actually engaging fun. and putting my money in there Oh, I'm sure you've seen all no. the CoffeeZilla stuff. It's great. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've watched a bit on NFTs and the rise and fall and the craziness stuff. surrounding it. And it's the, fascinating. And right? the... Um, it's kind of gone its course now. Celebrity though, influence on NFTs and the scamming. And they're like, Pump we, and didn't, dump. we didn't know anything. We're just this... allowing our image to the NFTs. It's like, you got to know what you're getting into. You have to do research. And this completely unregulated place where like in other places and like other institutions it'd be flat out illegal, but the weird gray zone of the internet, it's like, yeah. you're not allowed to promote something and then benefit from it. And then like, and then just wash your hands. <laughs> with it. But in like this weird thing. Yeah. Master KSI brings up something really important. I prefer original games on Atari age. Anyway, there's no game. I actually, I, no, that's not what I was thinking. He said, anyway, I was talking, I was thinking about the, um, the production of cartridges and boxes from Atari age versus Atari. Atari really has to prove themselves even recently there's like relatively recently there's screw-ups with um the atari cartridges yeah like them not working the quality assurance of that happening um even even this box i brought it up briefly but when i got it it didn't work it's crazy you have to update like with a he, thumb drive and even he's like oh you gotta update your control I'm like, what are you talking about it's yeah like, like <laughs> i they're, they're buy, probably, your, buy a product that they need to doesn't work up. it literally does not work out of the box no don't worry we're gonna update it up like, yeah so okay. they really if they they What's should the price be point on these guys it's uh well i bought it on a sale so i i don't know yeah. um it's a lot yeah it's a lot um they're not they're not losing money they're probably maybe breaking even on yeah. it or making money on it. Yeah, the VCS is broken out of the box, uh, which that's... is just and and that's six months after they recognized that problem. So they're not opening the boxes, plugging it in for fifteen minutes, putting it back in the box because that's all it takes. It's hands off. You don't have to even touch it. You can up it updates itself with that uh, thumb drive, which yeah. is good. Okay, so that's okay. That's I was thinking, but they don't include the thumb drive, like. <sighs> Like, yeah. like some people don't own a computer, they own a phone. Well, that's why you would buy a product like this because yeah. you don't. And if you, and the other thing is, if you have a computer, you can just run Stella. Yeah, <laughs> See yeah, what yeah I mean? exactly. Like the reason yeah. why you'd buy something is because you can. I, two two ninety nine US, so it's not inexpensive. Yeah, yeah, that's it's, that. I mean, that's competitive with any like a lot of the yeah. other systems, right? But it does run the games that I'm interested in, like 100%. the retro modern games that have a retro sensibility. And yeah, and it sounds like they're kind of figuring it out too. Like I think that um, this community, particularly this market, I mean, physical artifacts. Yeah. Is that is I mean I think that identifying and understanding the market of people who want to buy Atari games, I feel like <laughs> this is a community who wants a box that and a game <laughs> cartridge that works. That you know that's the whole yeah that's the whole gig right. So 
you know, did he sell people that watch this show on the system? I don't know. I don't know either, man. I don't know. All I, all did I he, know. Did he sell developers putting their games on the system? I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see as time goes on. I know there's some developers that are putting it on there. Will more come? I'll tell we'll you see. something that I think <laughs> we'll see. for sure should happen is yeah. um, keep letting um, James know your experiences with this. It's something you know, and your, the stories around like you know pros and cons of like if, if you get yeah. onto the VCS, what was that like? It'd be very interesting to continue to hear like the uh, community. Well, experience. post in the forums. Don't you don't have to don't send have it directly James, to but me. But I mean, like that yeah. would be interesting to see how that kind of stuff progresses and hear some of those narratives as things move forward. Yep. Um, well, let's let's do the cat the cat treats. Hey, you want to do the cat treats? You don't have to pay for it because it it or pledge, spend your bits, because uh, treat time was uh, triggered by pseudo graphics. Pseudo. So let's watch these cats go nuts. Are you ready? Oh, dear, they're already. Oh, they're right. Are you ready to rumble? That's copyrighted. You can't say that. Oh no! <laughs> it's treat time. We're, 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 we're yum, yum 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 yum. Go. Yeah. Oh. Alifer redeemed. Oh, I didn't even hear that. Thank you, Alifer, as well. They're very happy. Um, shall we go to 20? No, they got fed before. That's, That's too lot. many. Uh, yeah, they got fed before. License it. Okay, treat time. Ready, cats? Let's do this. Dang, hey, that's buddy. one for Atari. That is awesome. He's off to a good start. Does it have to be his bell? or is it No, okay? any bell is good. Any bell do in the storm. <gasps> Two for Atari. Atari. Wow. Sometimes he bats them out of the yeah, way. He kind of he played some, some. Oh, give him another one. Played some ball he ball. lost it. Oh no! Hey, Bill. Oh, he lost it. He's digging under my super video arcade. Oh no! There you go. There you go. And he batted it away again too. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking it out of the room. Oh, we gotta close those doors when it close that door when he comes back in. Come on, dudes. Come on, back in. Oh, oh was that Atari? That's Atari, yeah. Wow. Hey, buddy. Good job. Three, zero. Sprite, what's Sprite, going on you today? You step this game up, buddy. Come on. There we go. There go. Very strong ring. Sprite, Sprite's. Has he got his game on? Oh, he's oh, got his game, game on. That's back. two. Come on, Atari. Ring your bell. Ring it. Oh, you pressed it, but it wasn't strong enough. Ring it. There we go. Four, two for Atari. Kind of interfering, encouraging them on. Oh, That's okay. three. Sprite's catching up. Atari had a good lead. Come on, ring it. Nope. You hear that ding. You got to hear the ding. Hit it. Oh, he was about to take your bell. Oh, oh, Sprite's got Sprite, it. Buddy. It's tied up. Come on, Atari. Ring your bell. No, you're missing it. Come on, let's move it out a bit. Hit it. Hit that bell. Get it. There we there go. go Five four for Atari. Oh, Sprite. Oh, it could automate it, but they don't stick to their own bells. That's the only That's the problem. Issue, yeah. I was thinking of automating it. That's another word for Atari 6.5. But we'd have to have like them put in boxes or something, but I don't want to do that. So I have to do it manually. Oh, 7.6. Atari gets another one because I was thinking you can make, because they're physical connections. So you could hook up a joystick to each, like a joystick input. 8.7 for Atari. Still in the lead. And Atari. once they, the dinger hits the outside of the bell, it can make a connection and do play an Atari game. Seven. Oh, up to eight. Eight all. Come on. Who's going to get to game point? Atari was like <gasps> hitting. Sprite is at a game like point. Come on, Atari. Atari Bring your bell. The lake. Nine, nine. Make it nine, nine, Atari. Oh. Oh, no. Come on. Oh, Sprite's cleaning himself. Come on. He's distracted. Get it. This is your chance, buddy. It's your chance. Die it up. You're missing it. You're so close. You're missing it. It's g oh, is game? Sprite has got game point. It is Damn. 10 8 for Sprite. Guys. It's a little slow. I think I gave him too much treats when I scattered them on the That's ground. Okay. That's yeah, good okay. thing we didn't go to 20. Yeah. Tari going for the win. He was, oh, close. He was close. He was really close. So, uh, coming up on the show, um, we have an interview next show. A live interview with John Mikula. Oh, cool. Of Mr. Run and Jump for the 2600. His cartridge hey. is coming out in three days. So it'll be the day after his cartridge. And I believe it's the first official new game on cartridge. 
um, for for uh, that Atari has made. They have issued cartridges before of old games. Yeah. They've issued cartridges of games that never got released but were made back in the day. But in less a yeah, pre-order, um, unless I'm mistaken, it is the first new new game to put on cartridge. Is that correct? Please fact check me. Um, you know. You guys know. They definitely know. Um, we we'll also have the exclusive world premiere of Zark Stars 4 Nebula. And, yep, first new Atari game. Awesome. Um, and also Food Ninja as well. So we've got a jam-packed show. That's on Tuesday with uh, Tanya. Can you get off that box? <laughs> Come on. Little brats today, Come on. man. Come on. You can't scold cats. You can only encourage them to do something better <laughs> with their time. <laughs> it's true with a yeah. lot of things. Actually. By this Atari. Yeah, by this Atari. There's tons of cartridges. Not impressed uh, what I saw with the game, like a poor man's VHC. Well, we're going to get, uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the flicker. We're going to talk about his development with the game. Um, he says he programmed it all in assembly. Also VH. Where did he learn it? He has seems to have no presence in the Atari Age community. Maybe he's lurks there. We're going to find out. Also VHZC, that's a high bar. Oh, uh, it's you know the highest I mean? like, of high VHZC um, games, especially for platformers. He is the king of 2600 platformers. And, 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 and their own style. Oh, know, yeah. Like he's got a very unique, distinct approach. style. And I'm uh, glad to have uh, Erlen back on the show as yeah, well, Nathan Strum. So he'll, we just had a, a short break and it happened to fall on his day. Yeah, it's totally fine. And, and, and in general, having you back on the show is awesome. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, and it's interesting, like midsummer kind of vibes too. And VHC you know? games are Batari Basics. So oh. he, he's doing really well. He, he knows how to work that Batari Basic. Yeah. Um, it's not the tools, it's the painter. Atari Game Pool in Republic? I have no idea what that is. Uh, okay. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks so much, everyone. Uh, what else do I have coming up? Uh, oh, we also have the 7800 Game Drive Special. There's nothing under there. It just smells like it. Bad cat. Uh, <laughs> with James Bolton, Saint from Retro HQ. We also have a ColecoVision Special. Um, a live interview with Eduardo Mello from Opcode Games. And we're going to um, play some of his brand new ColecoVision games. Those both are unscheduled. Depends on some timing and stuff. Um, because 7800 Game Drive is going out right now in limited quantities, but it's kind of like, are there any problems? Mm, no, yes, fix the problems, and then we will have them on the show um, to make sure everything goes very smooth. Um, Dan, if you see, I'll probably wait a while before going to buy an Atari VCS. I'm on the mailing list, though. Okay, there you go. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, it was blast it was a lot of fun yeah, very interesting so may you lead an interesting life is that the uh yeah the saying <laughs> may your life may your life be interesting anyway yeah and just also sun just sun, sun zoo's art of war in a very fascinating character to in encounter today yes it was very interesting to talk to atari and get their perspective on uh, homebrew Thanks, Thrust, Nathan Strum, Dan. May you live in interesting times. I mean, we are for sure living there, in interesting man. times. <laughs> Master KSI, Mike Latow, Thrust, Dan, uh, ABC, Nathan Strum, Arena Foot, uh, Zen Listener. A whole bunch of new names that came in today. Um, welcome. We usually play homebrew games on old systems. It's lots of fun. Fotoko, 8 bits. Um, Pseudo graphics, ballistic coffee boy. Um, who else? Yeah, and I, I feel you, RC70 and Thrust. Too interesting. <laughs> yeah, too I want to stop living in interesting times. <laughs> RC70, uh, Adpat Res, uh, Prow7, um, Halloween Jack 2021, S. Ramirez, Major Havoc. Mother 3, and we got to the top. Um, so yeah, follow. Uh, if you're new here, just follow us for uh, when we have the next show on, which will be Tuesday. And everyone on YouTube, if you made it this far, thanks so much, guys. Yeah, type uh, type pumpkin in the chat. Yeah, in, pumpkin. In, in, in the comments, if you made it this far. Which if you made it that far. You may not have. Um, you get some pumpkin so, pie. Yeah, that's right. We'll ship it to you. No, we won't. No. <laughs> so have a great weekend. And we'll be back on Tuesday with some more uh, homebrew goodness. Talk to you soon. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.
Yeah, like and subscribe, hit the bell, support us on Patreon, buy merch, all that stuff. <laughs> Thanks, Nathan. <laughs>